Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. But tonight, we're going to do something a little different. We have an interview with none <laughs> other uh, than cats. No, they it's uh, John Hancock, the immortal John Hancock, friend of the show. We're very, very excited and honored to have him mm -hmm. on. Um, but before we get to that, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers who help support the show. Oh, actually, also, we might have a sneak preview of something later on in the show, so stay tuned. Don't don't switch away. <laughs> um, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers who help support the show and keep these cats fed in treats. 8-Bit Point, Andre Atari, Arms Guard, Coder, Atari, Night 74, Atari, H, Taris, Maximus, BR Poker, Bruno Stax, Cal, Stony, Mount, Charles, Wheel, and Shit, Lola, Cubanismo, D, Inoy. Uh, Cyrano Rebu, Dale Andrew Darling, Dave MZ, AZ, DMC, Drexel, Dr. Moo, Kaz, Eric Hart, Great Defender, Ground Trooper, JG, Johnny, WC, Caputo, Coder, Carl, G, Carecrack, Croco, 20 Scunder, Developer, Lambda Express, Many Sipping, T Mark, Yan, Spe Mark Spacing, McMuse, Mike Sol, Mike Dell, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Nostalgic Hog, uh, Rando, Rendered Ghost, Friendless, VD, Rivan, Tooley, Carter Pimp, Smitty B, Spice, Where Spinley's Yes, Ramirez, D Train, Tiki Dine, KT Foes, Trek, MD, Tweeny, VVG, Double Down, and XCan X. They're slowly scrolling beside tanya over it. there it if you it. didn't uh hear your name uh because <laughs> i read it out so fast but if you want to support the show you can just subscribe with uh Ready. amazon prime party it's time free for kittens. Cats, oh it's party cats. time for cats, kittens cats, cats, cats. well you can give them this All while right. i read out the news you go through the news oh cats Directly. everywhere don't want ready? to uh are you ready are you ready leave john hanging for too long <laughs> um I do have to show the news. You're going to have to look at the cats in the small little window down there. Yeah. So make sure you tune in. Halloween night. We're doing a special broadcast this Thursday, two days from now. We have the exclusive world premiere of Count Ducula. No sacks, please. We're Egyptian. <laughs> For the Jaguar from Cyrano J. And we also have the exclusive final version of Zombie Harvest. A brand new game from Reboot for the Jaguar as well. Um, and then on Friday, we have the exclusive retail version of Falling Leaves Collection for the 7800 uh, that includes eight games on one cart that's going to be the release the next day at eJag Fest 2024. Awesome. So lots of exclusives coming up. Um, uh, big news today. Uh, let me just switch over so you guys can see it. Keystone, Muddy Vision's Keystone Coppers for the 7800 is now back in print, or will be, March 2025. The pre-orders just started today, hours ago. Um, uh, it was out of stock, obviously, everybody knows, pulled from the Atari Age site, but now it is available for a pre-order from Opcode Games. Awesome. And it's now joining... Popeye and Moon Cresta. Popeye from Daryl Gunther and Moon Cresta from Bob DeCrescenzo. So they're building up their uh, Atari 7800 awesome. uh, in addition to all the um, other games that they offer. Well, for I'm glad they're finding a platform to continue yes, selling games. Yes, all the games. ports. So that's, yeah, yeah, it was that's a, bit, really uh, awesome. a bit dicey there. Yeah. So 2600 <laughs> games have found a place that's with uh, Champ Games. Yes. And maybe 7800's new home is with Opcode Op Games. So yeah. that's really exciting yeah. um, that they're available. So shipping March 2025. So keep that in mind if you're going to pre-order. Um, there's the page with all three games on it from Opcode Games. I will paste that in the chat. Uh, there you go. So still waiting on my last chance order from Atari Age. Dan says, well, you'll probably get that before these because this is March 2025. So keep uh, keep patient. Yeah. Um, what else do I have? Oh, this from Atari Age. The people who ordered Penult, the amazing 2600 RPG from Carl, mm -hmm. Carl G. Take a look at the map that you're going to be shipped if you bought it. Uh, Penalt, this is a cloth map that harkens back to the Ultima days where they included a map in the box with the game. So I can't wait to see the final version. We got a little sneak preview at PRGE from Al at mm, the Atari Age booth. Right. Remember that? He did have it but at it, the booth. It didn't have the, the embroidery around the edge. No. Yeah, yeah, so that looks so, so good. So yeah. he says he'll be shipping 30 of them out this week. Nice. And then uh, the Rain Reindeer going out probably to people who have it pre-ordered and who are waiting for their shipments. Cats are going crazy. Yeah, uh, just, well, uh, Atari got pushed out of the room, so it's just Sid now who's just rolling around and just having a complete catnip meltdown. So. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and the boxed release of Wizard of the Tower, mm -hmm. a very awesome platformer, um, is now available to order from Game Select. We had the world premiere of this game on the show. I couldn't stop playing it. Yeah. <laughs> I played it right to the end on the show. Um, so, and they linked me in the, in the post there, but, nice. uh, you're now able to buy it. Um, I'll put that link in the chat and, uh, or if you watch this on YouTube, it's down below. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really good platformer for the 2600. And the results of the ABBUC Atari 8-bit contest have now been revealed. I think it was two days ago, but we haven't had a show since then. First place, Rough and Trouble, mm -hmm. amazing platformer. Um, so I'm looking forward to playing all these show, all these games, uh, every single entry on November 5th, I think I have it scheduled for. So lots of really great games there. Uh, some of them are available for download now, but they'll be trickling out and hopefully by the 5th, I'll be able to get all of them to play. Uh, I think we are ready. Try to ramble through that as quickly as possible. <laughs> John is waiting in the wings. Yeah. So I would like to introduce and welcome, not introduce, welcome to Zero Page <laughs> Homebrew, a longtime YouTuber, a producer of a number of homebrew games and a huge video game aficionado. Please welcome the immortal John Hancock. Yeah. Welcome, Thank John, you. to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been a long time coming. We've wanted you on the show for a long time, and the day is finally here. Um, friend of the channel. Thank you so much for oh, having me. Some Strawberry, Strawberry System 22 just raided the channel. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we've run into each other over oh, yeah. the years at conventions and uh, talked uh, over those years oh, yeah. as well. And we have a lot of things in, in yes. common. We're both people who are on the internet we both love homebrews um so it's great to uh finally talk with you officially yeah, thank you <laughs> thanks for having me it's on. not real unless it's on the internet oh right oh my gosh yeah thank <laughs> yeah. you so much for having me um i know i've ran into several vancouver retro gaming expo uh yes. that's yeah. one of my favorite shows to go and relax and it's kind of yes. sad <laughs> i have to leave the country to do that but anyways uh yeah i i really enjoy uh our conversations Leave the headpiece. Yeah. Oh. That was me. Oh, no, just cut out. One second, one second, one second. No, that was me. Let me put you back on. Something just cut out. Kind of weird. Maybe it was Tanya. Step on the cable or something. Uh, you're still with us, but I'm trying to get you back on. Oh, my goodness. Let me just unplug you, plug you back in. There, we're All back. All right. I think Tanya stepped on the cable, or the cat stepped on it. It's all good. Uh, on the cable. Yeah. So, yeah, we've run into each other at Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo, which is a little quieter yes. than PRGE. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I really enjoy, uh, you know, we love both of Atari we both love the aftermarket scene and uh yeah i've yeah. been covering i've been a self-publisher since geez uh, i have my first game here actually uh and so <laughs> oh, in 2014 uh game ah. panic and so it looked different yep. a long time ago let's see if i got the original one moment here let me reach over and look at the, the o og release the og of it. release <laughs> yeah ah! collector's <laughs> item <laughs> one moment here. One moment. <laughs> okay. This is the first release. And this is with Jason, yeah. Jason Santucci. And it looked like this in 2014. Oh, nice. That's really so, cool with the pixelated yeah, cover. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's making fun of myself, avoiding spiders and water yeah. in my game room. But... Um, <laughs> And I love I love the LCD uh, version yeah. of the game, and there's been a couple yeah. here and there of Im implementing LCD versions and oil panic. Yeah, game this is panic. one. Of, this yeah. is one of the first, and so it was based on uh, Radio Radio Shack handheld plane and tank, and so that's what we got oh, inspiration okay. from. And um, I secured the rights from Gemtronic, uh, Jason Santucci, and um, yeah. I've published this for ten years. Oh so, wow. 
That's awesome. And so the uh, the ten year anniversary has got like it looks like a handheld unit. So oh, yeah, that is and so very it comes cool in a, a couple other homebrews come in these hard cases, and the reason why yep. the reason why I do that is so I put these in suitcases and take them to conventions and sell them. Um, yeah, yeah, the paper ones don't travel yeah. well. I have to be so careful when bringing Atari 2600, 7800, and any of the paper ones yeah. back. And I'm so glad they, they eventually did go to those hard covers like for, for Sega Genesis and stuff. Yeah, so the good news is for your fans uh, and any Atari Age members, if they're interested in any of my homebrews, they can email me. They can message me directly on Atari Age and we'll work something out. Oh, excellent! So that's, that's for yeah so, for your fans only. <laughs> no, uh, it's 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 uh, <laughs> yeah. You have to I prove your fan to get stock, it. <laughs> and so I sell them. And sometimes I have some left over at the end of the year. I have a small amount left, and yeah, uh, yeah. it takes me multiple months to save up parts, and I coordinate with a dozen different people around the right. world. And offer these yeah. at conventions. Typically, I do about ten shows a year. Uh, this last year, I was even in Brazil, so that's a whole other story. Yes, yeah. I saw that. That's that's really yeah. exciting. And there was a Brazilian table at PRGE yeah. this year, which was really cool to yeah. see all the uh, stuff that we don't normally get to see. So you must have had a blast. Oh, it was in so much fun, and they they just officially asked me back, and so um, oh, I'm like just and mind blown that like. I'm going to another country for a game convention. And so lots <laughs> yeah. of Atari love down there huge, too. And so, um, hu- that's what I was just going to say. Huge Brazilian homebrew yeah. community for the 2600. Yeah. Um, it's really, really great. And I have a lot of communication with probably the same yeah. people you talk to. As yeah. Well. Covered, yeah. covered, uh, covered the Brazilian homebrew about the bee. And that was on my, Oh and yes. That, and that was a Jatai really, the bee? Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, it was a really cool case and everything. And so it takes oh, a B, a 3D yeah. printed B to like unlock it. Really cool. That's one of the most innovative game cases yeah. I've ever seen. I think it's going to be a, quite a contender in the uh, homebrew packaging competition yeah. this year. <laughs> um, so I want to start yeah. uh, going back in, in yeah. time with you. So let's learn a little bit about your Jeez. history with video games. Um, if you can think yeah. back many decades, uh, what consoles and computers did you grow up with? That's pretty interesting. So ironically, I never really had growing up a 2600 in my household. I had to go to my cousins yeah. and play. Uh, my cousin had the 2600. Yeah. I was the youngest and they like, they like to yeah. play against me cause I was the youngest. They could beat me. So, you know, the curve and the shots and yep. combat and stuff. And so my older, oh, yeah. my older cousins would, would gang up on me and, and warlords and all that. Um, but I grew yep. up, my, my first console in my home was a Radio Shack TV scoreboard. And so at the end okay. of the era of, of Pongs, my dad picked one up yep. pretty cheap. And uh, eventually later on, I, I, uh, we got a Nintendo a NES in yep. 87. And then my first okay. console I earned with my own money was a Sega Genesis. And my brother's yeah. first, my first computer in my household was an Atari ST. So my brother got it. Oh, it was wow. my brother's. And so um, I played Commodore uh, at my friend's house. So we had a lot of that. Yeah. Ironically, they were like pretty conservative, but they had pirate software. It was weird. And so a ton of it too, a yeah, ton of games. Pretty much everyone and did. So yeah, yeah. so you know, uh, it was pretty interesting with that. But yeah, lots of games. Um, so that yeah. I mean, between arcades and Atari at my cousins, Nintendo at home. Yeah. Eventually played Sega Genesis, and then moving forward. But um, one of the first retro consoles when I started retro collecting in the early '90s was Atari 2600 yeah. at a yard sale, and so I picked. Picked oh, one nice. up with a black yeah. and white TV. My dad was just really confused because he's like, okay, so you <laughs> – well, he didn't understand. Like, I wanted my own TV. The TV was in my room. Right. I could play video games on a separate TV, and I, it wouldn't interfere yep. with anything. And he was just like, why are you playing on a black and white yeah. TV? And I said, Dad, the Atari 2600 <laughs> has a black and white mode. And he's like, just, <laughs> nope. <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> just didn't no. get it. Yeah, yeah. Big, big uh, divide between the generations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's good that you had your own TV, so you didn't interfere, and you could play it any time you wanted. And you know, black and white's good enough. I started, you know, way back then playing twenty six hundred in black and white. I didn't have a console either, so it was 
kind of the same trajectory. My first computer or console was a Commodore oh, 64. Nice. nice. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I mostly played on friends uh, yeah. systems, you know, NES and also 2600 and just all of the different systems. But I, I've never had one. Not until I got into retro collecting did I start amassing crazy amounts of stuff. And same, <laughs> same about about the same era early yeah. 90s when everybody was clearing yeah. out the 2600s you could get any game for it for 50 cents or 25 cents <laughs> and i just bought everything i could get my hands yeah. on back yeah then. i bought all my stuff used at, at thrift uh, at uh you know like flea marts and yard sales yeah. and really yeah. i didn't really hit the the mega collecting scene like i didn't know that other people were doing this until the classic gaming expos of the early 2000s and so I was doing this for Ooh, okay. a long time by myself, mostly collecting Atari, yeah. a lot of Odyssey 2, yeah. believe it or not, which was just because oh. it was in my area. Um, I found it here and there, and, and nobody else cared about it. So, like, I could get it super cheap, which means, <laughs> like, 20 bucks could go yeah. pretty far back then. Um, Atari, same thing. Yeah. I, I was collecting Nintendo, Sega, Odyssey 2, and Atari. Th that was, like, like... Atari, Atari NES, Sega Genesis, and Odyssey 2 were like really my focal points for the early 90s. So, right, yeah. right. So, um, how long ago did you start your YouTube channel and what inspired you to start recording videos? Like, why would you want to put yourself out there to the public like we do <laughs> <laughs> and punish uh, glutton for punishment? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a whole other story. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I always was one of those kids that had talking marked on the report cards. And so um, <laughs> okay, but I'm also an yeah. educator. So I'm in education. I like to talk and educate right. people. I don't consider myself a game historian, but a game educator. And so part of that mm. is I do a wide a widespread of knowledge from everything from Atari to Xbox. But what, right. what started it was I was looking for an opportunity to offer a product at early shows, including classic gaming expos on what's some way, what's a way I can get some scratch money and offer something, but that people would actually buy and, and, yeah. you know, get some game money at the, at these shows. And then, so I came up with this idea. I'm going to educate people on how to collect because by by the early 2000s, my right. collection was featured in a couple magazines, and okay. um, Tips and Tricks was probably the most famous magazine that my collection was featured in. The one with Tony Hawk on the front, January of 2004, okay. and Joe Santulli yeah. of the uh, uh, National Video Game Museum fame and DigiPress website, yeah. which is a, a, a long-standing forum that competed with Atari Age. That's really where I was getting my knowledge from. And so um, okay. So by that time, I, had, I wanted to offer educational videos on how to collect stuff. And I started the vi a, a DVD series called The Nuts and Bolts of Video Game Collecting. Terrible, <laughs> like to these standards. I was using a Fuji yeah. digital camera to film and using a Windows yeah. Movie Maker to put them together. So like... Right. Oh man. It like it's <laughs> but uh so I started making these videos and I did them for several years yeah. and sold over 500 copies. So did pretty okay. well. Um and this was before yes, YouTube. Yes. This is just So yes. Yeah. Then people are saying, "Well, you ought to do a YouTube channel." And then uh Gamester 81, John Lester, I was on his channel, he was showing my collection. A Happy Console Gamer was one an early channel that I was on. And then the big break was Metal Jesus Rocks. And so he was having lots of guests on his channel. He brought me on talking about Sega and collecting. And that kind of mm. started like, hey, you got to start your YouTube channel. So I didn't have initially a lot of content. And so um, even though my right. first video was original, just how big an Atom computer box is in 2009 is when I started. Yeah, I had one. Yeah, it was, it's a huge box. I had to get rid of it. It was just too big. So <laughs> I have no room. So <laughs> after that, I started uploading my nuts and bolts of DVD videos, which are still on my channel. Okay. And then after a few years, I started to do original content. And then by, by 20, so I did like free videos, wasn't making anything for years. And then started yeah. to get really like serious in 2015. So about nine years okay. ago is when I started uploading 
multiple times a week, um, having a schedule, right. starting to, to yeah. really, really get into, you know, serious, like taking it more seriously and, and just making videos I wanted to make, you know, and had right. a lot of help, you know, I, I, I thank Metal yes. Jesus Rocks and uh, the, the Metal Jesus Rocks t- YouTube crew and uh, I still, <laughs> yeah. I still own collaboration with John Riggs and and Reggie and them, uh, and I'm part of a like a like a content creators group that helps me, uh, just with stuff oh, nice. and friends and I just I, I these days I just kind of make things on a more less serious note. You know, I have a pretty stressful job, and right. so I use it as a creative outlet to just yeah. make stuff. So I've been doing it about 15 years. Yeah. That's a long story short. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That is a very long time in the world of YouTube yeah. gaming. Yeah. One of the OGs. One of the OGs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. So you've got a pretty impressive and eclectic collection of video games and consoles. It must be an undertaking just to keep track of them all. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about how you inventory, <laughs> like just looking at the the photo the the video of you and what's behind you there's just literally just thousands in frame right now and i know there's more than well the funny thing is this is not my game room this is my studio (laughs) so i have two rooms and um the first the first answer is it's stressful and it's something i i haven't really wanted my collection around me this long and i and we can talk mm. later a little bit about that for just like, but yeah, it's yeah. been stressful. Um, yeah, my wife almost died two years ago with cancer. And yes. so, yes. and I've had my own health issues that I've kind of dealt with. Um, and, yeah. and a, and a day job that is taxing, especially this year. But the long story short yeah. is I started out, um, on Digipress. They had these checklists. Hey, if you want to collect every, and I'm a North American collector. So I'll say that. I mostly right. primarily collect North American releases. Um, that's my cutoff. Yeah. That's my bookends. Everybody's got a bookend for like, <laughs> yeah. what do you, what do you stop at? You have to, you have to have a yeah. stop point because it just goes infinite. Yeah. So my yeah. my stopping point is North American <laughs> games and North American sets. So uh, throughout the uh, a long time, I've been collecting about thirty years, and yeah. I've amassed uh, with some asterisks of like. I have this, but I don't have that. Like, um, 36 North American sets. And so, uh, some large sets like NES and Genesis and Super Nintendo and, and like, and then like N64. And, and then my NES is complete in box minus stadium events. Sega Genesis complete in box. Super Nintendo about a third. N64 complete. Uh, Vetrex, like some, and then Dreamcast. And then, uh, in an Atari XEGS. (laughs) In the house. Very nice. And so those are awesome. I love that. I love that. And so 7,800. <laughs> I've got one 7, too. 7,800, yeah. 5,200 Atari Jaguar, Atari Jaguar CD. But then I have like loose Game Gear wow. set, uh, new on. Yeah. I have weird stuff. Like I, not all like huge <laughs> yeah. and massive and, and no, I'm not rich. It's just like I started collecting this when nobody thought it was like everybody kind of laughed. Like when I was collecting Sega Genesis, yeah. <laughs> I'd go into rental stores and they're like, what are you looking for? I'm like, what Sega Genesis games do you have? They'd be like, we just have like a bunch of sports crack, crap, crap left. And I'm like, okay, yeah. what do you have? And they're like, wait a Let's minute, see do you it. care about the sports games? I'm like, yeah, it, what, what, you know, I'm missing some. And they're like, one of my best scores was a, was a rental place. And they didn't have wow. any games left, but they had the spine art and the manuals for oh, over 300 okay. Sega Genesis games. And so wow, that's like that's my friend really is the reason why I have this in my collection and it helped complete my Sega Genesis set. So I was really, really excited and I was free. It was a yeah, free I... score. So it was like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause that's, <laughs> that's stuff that's missing in a yeah. lot. Like manuals are missing. Yeah. And yeah. If I had to buy my collection over again, I wouldn't yeah, be able no. to. That's yeah. That's the thing you had. Like you really had to start before the nostalgia yeah. hump kicks in yeah. of, you know, 20, 30 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just gets really, really expensive. If I had to do my Vectrex collection over again, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, so getting back to inventorying them. So 
checklist. <laughs> so checklist. Yeah, checklist. Okay, so um, right. I have these checklists that I got from Digipress, which are still on like a sub page on their site. It used to be Digipress slash money, oh, okay. but like I use those for the longest time. And um, RF Generation yeah. is a website that has a really good kind of inventory of like what's out there. And I use that to check yeah. things, but like, yeah. And so I use that in a nerd, I call it a nerd binder. I still have one. Um, it's not <laughs> on me, but um, anyways, I kind of stopped going after like mega sets years ago. Um, I am wrapping up my Intellivision set. So I'm one, one nice. box away from the 125. I did go with a aftermarket, wow. I mean, uh, sorry, a reprint of Spiker, yeah. which is from the Blue Sky okay. Rangers. But everything else is complete, um, and so I, I, that's taken years. But uh, I, I kind of went yeah. after it seriously this last year because I just – I don't know. I'm a fan of Intellivision. I wanted to collect it. I like the homebrew stuff, and uh, it was yeah. it was attainable. But that it's might be system. one of my last sets I collect. So, but Yeah, because yeah, once you start looking at like almost anything yeah. for a complete set, it gets outrageous, especially the, the top-tier yeah. stuff into the yeah, thousands I just, and some of them into the tens yeah, of thousands. I, I, I don't, I'm not that. I'm not that collector. And, and uh, I was able to yeah. get some high, some harder to get educational games for Intellivision, Learning Fund 2 and 1. I got a good yeah. deal on Learning Fund 1, but it, it kind of, it's hard when you have to, when, not have to, but like you want to collect something and you know you're going to pay a lot of money for something you're never going to play. And part of it was, mm. that's hard, I, yeah. I'm a big fan of, in television history and i think it's fascinating that they were sold up to like 1990 i think or late 80s and yeah same like atari 2600 up to yeah. 92 yeah crazy, that's nuts. crazy mm. longevity so yeah. i i fasc i'm fascinated with intelligent really happy that atari bought them and um you know and actually yeah. uh, this last year was able to work with others and publish my first intelligent game so that was exciting super that's, exciting that is very exciting yeah um, so no uh, full set of Neo Geo AES? No. I have about 50 <laughs> cards. You're not rich? I have about 50 <laughs> AES cards. I have the last. I have Samurai wow. Showdown 5 Special Fixed Edition. And I have some pretty wow, rare so ones. And I have about yeah. 50 MVS cards. So I have a I have wow. a good collection, but I have no desire to collect a full set. Um, I just did a video on a homebrew Neo Geo game. So I'm really exci yeah. excited. Uh Vengeance Hunters, I do believe is the name of it. That's my latest video on my channel. It's a, um, and that's available on modern one, platforms right? for people that want to don't want to pay the four hundred dollars for the cart. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you do, if if I could ask you this question? Do you know why the carts are so expensive? Yes. Is it to offset the development costs? Yeah. Yeah. Or? So I mean, so to make a Neo Geo homebrew cart. So the so thing about Jaguar, everybody kind of complains about Jaguar. Well, Jaguar boards are a lot more expensive. OK, because the, the Jaguar cost of a homebrew is anywhere from like 60 to 80 bucks. Well, times yeah. that by two, because Neo Geo has two PCB boards inside. Right. Uh, inside. And so that's double yeah. the cost right there. You have less people probably getting it because of the cost. So, yeah, the amount of uh, the amount of upfront costs on stuff like that is pretty significant. And so it right. has to cost significant because I've, I've seen several different companies and that's like the cost is 400 bucks and 350 maybe like on a sale. Yeah. Um, and MBS yeah. is a little bit cheaper, but um, yeah, it's just, it just costs so much to do those. That's why, that's kind of why I have never thought about publishing all my games on a Neo Geo. <laughs> um, I'd rather go yeah. kind of a uh, more, more affordable routes. Um, and and yeah. people what people that may may not know even on like a, a cheaper a cheaper route like I was still out thousands of dollars to to publish my game on a television with no guarantee. So and that's like yeah you have to you have to think about all the parts the the box yeah. uh, the box the artwork right. um, the game itself <laughs> exactly nice. um, yep, the left. manual. <laughs> and and, and with Intellivision, the overlays yeah, I, as well. The collectors want the overlays. I worked with the Intellivision community. I worked yep. with a different guy for an artist. I worked with a different guy that did music. Um, I had to. Yeah, I, had to yeah. I went with. I went with uh, repurposed shells. Even though now I know that you can buy. You can. There's a provider that offers them for about the same cost. Yeah. A printer, a box supplier, 
I mean, it just goes on and on. A lot and of parts, then, a lot of moving parts. You get the yeah. fun of assembling it all. And what's great oh, is yes. the television community yeah. helped me, but like that takes time and like it's fun. I mean, you know, I, I love publishing, but I on seriously I don't make it a ton of revenue from it. It's just more of like no. I'm kind of the it's the artsy like, hey, I made it I made a video game, or I I helped publish a video game with the help of many people and it just made it Yes. It's it's just fun doing that. And but um, you know, I, yeah. I've published and worked on about twenty different projects. I currently have about 12 available. And so um, yeah. I, I've done, I've worked on Nintendo games. Uh, we yeah. we could talk about that, but yeah, I mean, I, I have we'll, them all we'll, right here. We'll get into the homebrew yeah. after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I can't imagine you keep your whole collection in your house. Maybe you yes. do. I just have a small one and it's filling this room and parts of other rooms. Yeah, it's and all, it's I have to home. keep it out of sight. <laughs> Uh, mostly out of yeah. sight because yes. and and contained. Yeah, I have two rooms. But, uh, contained. I have two rooms, and that's the rule. Uh, it has to stay contained. Yeah. I just cleaned okay. the studio, so it's really it's it's about as optimal as it can get. I'm, I've been out of space a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't like yeah. it at home, but but the nice thing about at home is that if if I need to do a video or something, I just pull something out. And that's true. But yeah, yeah I'm out of space. I'm out of space. I don't like it at home. <laughs> I want it in the yep. public, and that's that's been challenging. That's been uh, a real big challenge uh, that I haven't really talked about a lot just because plans have kind of shifted. Um, I can say yep. right now I had a local business that was going to host my collection forever. I um, formed a nonprofit yep. four years ago, and unfortunately, uh, this business changed management hands so that the, there was an older, uh, an older gentleman who was the manager, and he, he – he handed the business off to his kids and or to his yeah. kid. And they did not want to move forward with hosting my collection because they were concerned about it being profitable, which is totally understandable. Um, of course, and, yeah. uh, you know, they, they identify as a, a, a business that was connected to games. Uh, my plan is to have a video on, uh, and talk about this, this next year. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I will, I will name the business when I do it. It's just, Right now, I got some things. Uh, I have a, a plan B with a with yeah. a company. <laughs> uh, fingers crossed that that happens. If it doesn't, I'm still going to do the video and say this is where I'm at. So it's just been yeah. really challenging. It's been really challenging moving forward with that. As uh, you know, it's something I've wanted my collection out of my house for many years, and it just yeah. a major deal fell through with this local business and it was devastating. It, it crushed me. I'm not, I'm not going to oh, lie. Understandable. But you know, they yeah. have a right to do that and I'm just yeah. going to move forward. But you know, my, uh, until then, uh, people that go to PRGE can appreciate, uh, parts of my game collection that I, I bring and showcase exactly. every year. Yeah. So those are yeah. great. Those are really impressive when you bring out your collections yeah. and display them nicely. So everyone yeah. can yeah. see and, and, I mean, that's a, a great aspiration is to give back to the yeah. public what you've been enjoying. And um, and we all have to think about what what are we going to do with all this yeah. crap <laughs> <laughs> when when we yeah. go do do our wives care? Eh, no. Do our kids care? <laughs> no, they're doing other no. things. They don't care about this old plastic. They're uh, the digital generation. They don't care about physical no. items like we do. So we have to yeah, think my, about what yeah. where, where our stuff's going to go. My wife doesn't care. Can't... My kids don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they they I can yep. tell you right now it would it would it would be traumatic if my yeah. my family had to deal with all this stuff. And I trust me, I oh, want it more too. than gone. Yeah. And especially when my wife almost died, um, it really yeah. really yeah. really had a hard time because it's like if my wife was a pass, yeah. I don't know if I want to deal with all this. And, and, um, yeah. you know, I've, I've kind of separated for sure. this collection behind me as mine. Cause it, I, I kind of like in my mental state kind of divorced it and I'm kind of yeah. caretaking a collection and right. I really do yeah. look forward to having it somewhere else. And I, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, it has the, a burden aspect to it. Space. Um, yeah. My yeah. family would love to have like space in the garage for I don't know a car, <laughs> like I don't know like there's certain things that, like 
it, you know, yeah, I've had, yeah, no yeah, kidding. I've, I've had this collection with me since I've been married. I've been married 22 years, and uh, my wife accepts it, and I'm yep. gracious for her uh, patience <laughs> with it. But um, now, yep. now I want it out yep. of the house. Mine but too. There's not some magic place <laughs> for that, and yes. that's been yeah. the challenge. Uh, a plan B. I'll find out more information this next year. Hopefully, the plan B. Okay. And you know, there's there's going to be people that like it and don't like it. That's okay. I'll I'll take those arrows. Yeah. Uh, and they're done that. I'm all right with <laughs> yeah. it. So. Um. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, hope it hope it all works out and and works out yeah. well for for you. Um, so let's move on to your YouTube yeah. career. So you release about two videos a week, give three. or take. Go to a bunch of conventions. Three. Okay. Three. For yeah. nine years. Um. Wow. Wow. That's that's a lot. <laughs> And you go to a bunch of conventions, you have a family, you have a day job. Uh, you, How do you maintain the work-life video games balance? <laughs> I struggle with that. Um, I think it's been harder yeah. this year, um, if I'm being completely honest. I still have my hair. I do have hair. Hey! So, hey I don't hey, have I've cool got hair like too. you. <laughs> you got nice hair. <laughs> um, both of you had nice oh, hair. Oh, thank you. But I'm just saying... <laughs> Oh, I'm not thanks. balding yet. This is good too. Uh, but uh, my gr my hair my 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 hair's gotten gray. Um, I struggle. Yeah, yeah, it's getting there. I struggle. Yeah. Um, there's times I I I think my family is brought up to my attention. Dad, you work a lot, and yeah. I my kids are getting That's older. Uh, my kids are in high school now, and I've reflected yeah. upon that and thought about maybe slowing YouTube down just so I can have more time with my family. Or more time to, right. I don't know, lots of things. But like, uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It's, I'm tired. I'm tired, and yeah. uh, I enjoy yeah. the healthy, creative outlet of YouTube. But YouTube has changed a lot, right. and there's so many amazing new content creators. But like, I've kind of stopped chasing the algorithm and just make videos that I want to do. And if it doesn't do well, I don't care. I just don't. I just don't yeah. care anymore. I just like, it's great. Yeah. You know, hey, for people that want to tune in, I'm grateful for that. But like, and it's great yeah. when a video does awesome, but you can get kind of sucked into all that. And then it becomes yeah. a job. And then I, then yeah, I and think, then you start you know hating what? it because I work too hard yeah. to work hard after work. And I'm at an age where <laughs> yes. I'm just, I just am tired. You know, nappy time is looking more popular. <laughs> And, you know, time yeah. with my wife, time with my kids, time petting my cats. Um, I got two cats. Yeah. I love them. And, uh, yeah, cats are great. That's it. I mean, the long story <laughs> short is like, I, I don't handle it well, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it's, it's a lot you take on with the conventions and you work as an educator and putting three videos out a week. That's, yeah, I don't know if you sleep. Yeah. Do you sleep? <laughs> Do you get some sleep? Yeah, I get uh, <laughs> six good. to eight every night. I make sure to get six to eight. Oh, good. Um, yeah. I'm pretty adamant. So like I'll go to bed super early to get up early to do a video before I go to work, which I have to be at to work by seven o'clock. Wow. And sometimes it's like a seven Ooh, to four shift before work. Um, one thing I yeah. tell about teachers, teachers don't just, they don't work nine months. They work year round. It's just condensed into nine months. Yeah. So that's what mm -hmm. I tell people. Yes. I'm like, so you're working, sometimes I'm working 50, 55 hours and mm -hmm. between all the yeah. contacts with parents and and the work after school and meetings, yes. like, you know, I had two, I, I had a, a meeting before school and a meeting after school today on top of doing conferences. Wow. I brought home work. After this, I'm doing conference notes, messaging parents, go to bed, hopefully before nine and get up at five. <laughs> then you have to do, five and do then you have to do again. shows like this. Yeah, and, and and I have to put more burden nah. on you, and you have to do nah, shows like fine. this. Uh, I already have my video half done for tomorrow. I'm doing ha uh, a video on Haunted Halloween '87, You're the Witch, which is a great NES oh, game. Nice. Uh, and it's Halloween themed. It's late, but you know part of the challenge too. <laughs> it's still not Halloween, so oh. you're good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's um, it's crazy though, because like, as a YouTuber, everybody wants a piece of you, and. I love, yeah. I love, I'm super social. Like I'm a, a significant extrovert in small groups. So this is enjoyable. So this isn't taxing. Oh, that's good. Um, and that's I use good. my YouTube yeah. as that. So like, I need that. I don't know if I'll ever will fully quit YouTube, at least in a short run, uh, because I use it as a creative outlet to like express myself. And so 
that's kind of where I'm at right. currently. And um, I'm doing the videos I want to do, and uh, I'm, I'm doing stress-free videos. And I enjoy doing product reviews and home brews and aftermarkets. It's just – it's the fourth quarter, so everybody wants a piece of me and, like, hey, cover this, cover that. And I'm like, <laughs> I only have so many hours of the yeah. day, and it's tough. <laughs> so with all these responsibilities, do you have any hobbies outside of video games? Like you watch movies, oh. you go to concerts, or – yeah yeah, okay. yeah so good you have time for that at least i love <laughs> movies and i find as i get older yeah. my game time outside of youtube is more like watching tv i love i love the netflix like kind of trash documentary or train wreck or murder yeah. mystery or any of that <laughs> um they had one on yeah. like this historian was like thinking our history t historical timeline is messed up and so i watched that Keanu, Keanu reeves was a <laughs> special guest on it and it was Oh, nice. I don't know what it's nice. called, but it didn't really matter. It's like I watched it. It's like, okay, watch this. Go to bed. Night. Rinse to repeat next day. Um, so that's yeah. fun. Um, I, go, I try to go to a concert every year. This this year, I took my son to his first rock concert, Iron Maiden. And so, oh, nice. And so that was fun. Yeah. Uh, same. I saw them in Tacoma, which I saw uh, Black Sabbath a few years back on their final tour, wow. Kiss. Um, and yeah, before that, yeah. Rush. So I've gone to like. 40 or 50 con uh, rock concerts. So I do that. Nice. I like rock music. Um, I like yep. food um, too much, but yeah, yeah Brazil is beautiful <laughs> for that. Um, just the best, oh, I just the best wow. food you could have in the world. And uh, yeah. So, I mean, I have hobbies, but I mean, I, I don't have a lot of time. And so part of it is a hobby for me is I have one hour maybe to watch a show. I like football too. So I'm a football fan. I'm a Philadelphia Eagles okay. fan yeah. since 1990. So uh, I like watching okay. football and uh, watch movies, like movies. And so if it's if it's a oh. decent movie or even if it's a bad movie, I'll, I'll watch it with friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good to, to hear that you have time for hobbies because that would just drain you if you didn't. Yeah. And and I know when I'm, I'm doing my show, it takes up a lot of my time prepping for it and uh, getting things together, talking to developers. Yeah. Do you and so I don't have much time outside of my show to play video yeah. games. So how much time do you spend playing games that aren't related to YouTube videos that Yeah, you that time has disappeared. And so um <laughs> what I've really yeah. noticed the last couple of years is that I've really gotten to like Atari games and arcade games because yeah. it's that what's great about Atari is I think the reason why it continues to be popular with adults, especially adults that grew up with it, is you can pick up and right. play a game 15 minutes. And it's mm -hmm. got that yes. it's got yes. that enjoyable experience. And then I don't have yep. to beat it. I can just play it. And if I have time, I'll play yep. it again. And if not, it's a cool, shiny thing on the shelf. If you collect physical, yeah. <laughs> um, there's no DLC or patch. Like, there's, there's really... I really enjoy Very Atari games because... It's that experience that no other generation can really understand. Like I'm looking at yes. something like even my own game, Catacombs of Chaos. Okay, there's a there's a there's a there's something in this game called Death Fog, and Death Fog yeah. is literally like a bar that moves, and if it touches you, it takes your health. But like using your imagination <laughs> to understand and like, I called it. I got the name of Death Fog because that's what I just thought of. Because, you know, it's if you look name. at it, Atari <laughs> game, sometimes you're like, yeah. that looks like a block. But that block <laughs> is something in the game that's not a block. It's identified as something else. Yep. And um, yeah. especially with, like, some of the earlier titles, there's there's some creativity yeah. and fun with, like, playing an adventure, a good example. You're you're a block. Oh, yeah. You know, but you're not. You know, you're, yeah. a, you're a character. And... No, it's you. It represents you. Yeah. And, and, yeah, we really had to use our imaginations. Yeah. And it was all about pure gameplay yeah. at that yeah. point if the gameplay was there everything disappeared yeah. we imagine what we saw in the box cover or what's in our imagination or in the manuals and that became the yeah. world and yeah it's and you know as games go on i don't want to sound like a grumpy old man but a lot of <laughs> the visuals have taken over the gameplay yeah. there's still really great new games coming yeah. out but uh sometimes gameplay gets lost yeah. in that mix and everything's about the graphics or the sound yeah. or you know whatever yeah 
you know, VVG Double Down says, you're a block fighting angry ducks. Adventure. I know, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. fight, fight those Just ducks. Just got to dodge those ducks. Yep. That's all. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have a lot of time to yeah. play games outside of, you know, the, the games I play. But luckily, they're the games I yeah. like to play. <laughs> and so I get to spend time playing these brand new yeah. games from developers that are just as passionate about yep. these systems that I am as I am. But I was going to say the stream gives you the excuse to yes. spend yeah. time that, with these games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, which is really nice about Twitch yeah. and live streaming. Yeah. yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm actually playing some of these That's pretty much the only time that I play the games is on the live stream. People <laughs> yeah. see my game playing. Yeah. Um outside of like private beta testing and stuff for games that are coming yeah. up, but um yeah, yeah, everybody sees me playing the yeah. games. So it's it's fun. It was kind of goes hand in hand it was an excuse to like let's play some games so let's let's start up a twitch channel yeah, awesome yeah. um so i know i have enough trouble trying to keep up with homebrew games <laughs> that are coming out it's just a like atari homebrew games it's huge and it doesn't seem to be slowing down um so i can't imagine how much trouble you have keeping up because you have a much bigger net you cover a lot of stuff like you said from atari to xbox so Tell us a little bit about how you keep updated on everything. Is it a balance between people reaching out to you uh, with information or like a bit of your own research or how, how does that work? Well, in previous years when I was less busy, I would reach out more. Um, I rely on these very cool people like Zero Page Homebrew that like showcase and premiere new games. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but honestly, um, yeah, sometimes I, I've kind of identified as not just Atari, but I cover a lot of aftermarket stuff. Everything from 3DO. Yeah. I, I had a 3DO yeah. homebrew I did on my channel. Um, That's awesome. Neo Geo, <laughs> like Xeno Crisis. I got to uh, show the Neo Geo version of that game on my channel. I covered that all the different like platforms. N64, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. And so yep. um, because I've been kind of... And so probably the homebrew scenes that I'm... A little bit more attached with Sega Genesis, so I got to show. Uh, unfortunately, got canceled, but uh, Fatal Fury uh, Special, a real bout. Sorry, real bout Fatal Fury Special. There was a Brazilian developer making that for Sega Genesis. It looks like there was some nice. uh, shenanigans or uh, people <laughs> trying to like pirate the game and offer it, so the uh, development got canceled. I don't know all the history of that, but. Um, so I got to show the yeah. demo of that on my channel and uh, some other things. 2600, but yeah, um, Jaguar. I'm a big Atari Jaguar fan. Uh, I've been working with Songbird Productions, so they're they send me stuff and we I promote their stuff. Carl's awesome. Stone Age Gamer. I work with them. Castlemania Games. Yeah. So typically on a big release, a company will reach out. Um, also, okay. Atari has been actually the company Atari has been wonderful to work with. So. I, I kind of keep in yeah. connection with new products that are promoting, you know, retro. So I'm going to be uh, yeah. uh, showcasing Bounty Bob Strikes Back on the 7800 Plus um, and covering yeah. the 7800 awesome. Plus. I work with Evercade, <laughs> so I get all that goodness, including my game is yeah. going to be on an upcoming Evercade card, uh, Indie Heroes 4. So, um, oh, that's great. So yeah, I mean, if you if I really sit down and think about all the stuff I've got my my hands in many cookie jars <laughs> and it's kind of yeah. crazy but some people come up to me how do you have time for everything and then i just think about how tired i am <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah 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 you kind of add it up in your head and like oh my god yeah so much time dedicated to doing this but it's it's worth I it i love it it's i love it. it i love yeah talking about video games some of my <laughs> best moments are when i'm at a convention and I talk to a fan yes. and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or a, or an interview, um, even stuff like this. This is not work to me. This is enjoyable. And and yeah. I can put it's aside. It's like fun chatting with people about yeah. a hobby that yeah. you you love. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really enjoyable. Yeah, I yeah. just love uh, talking about games. I can put the stress of the world on pause. Um, yeah. I don't get political or religious on my channel. I just talk games. That's why people tune in. That's yep. it. That's who I am. And that's it. Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of a simple guy. And I like games. And I like simple arcade and Atari games style. And uh, that's why I wanted to get into publishing. Because like I wanted to... 
kind of create a line of games that are family friendly or just fun to play and anybody of any age you could be age five you can be age 80 and you can enjoy them so yeah and and talking about your approach to making videos yeah. on your channel I, I really like your channel because it it's very different from a lot of other channels it's very laid back it's very non-clickbaity can you talk a little bit about your philosophy yeah. towards making your yeah. videos that you release yeah, um, I I take the approach. I, I got inspiration from Happy Console Gamer, um, and his kind of style, his production values have really increased. Um, I kind of keep it simple, where I'm like looking at a camera and just have a conversation, and or right. I'm doing gameplay footage and I just re- do a B-roll behind. I do record the gameplay footage and then just talk over it. And a lot of my takes yeah. are one or two takes. I don't script. I just kind of <laughs> cut out all the bad parts, and sometimes I keep the bad parts in because I'm tired or <laughs> yeah. I don't care, or I or just got it down to or just at then. work. And so um, I try to have a kind of organic approach where um, I'm not an A-type person, even though I'm a teacher and I work with A-type people. Uh, I'm not, yeah. and uh, I just call good at the end of the day, and and I try to offer. Um, I feel a, a, an option for entertainment that is relaxing, family friendly. Um, you know, I'm not like super straight lace, like off the camera, if I'm being honest, but like (laughs) kids watch my channel and I don't cuss and I don't drink. And I, uh, on that, because I want to promote, uh, if kids are watching me, I want to be a positive influence on them. And I think, uh, and, and trying to be a good role model as best as I can in the public. So, um, but I'm a normal yeah. person off camera, you know, I have my moments like today, I was kind of grumpy and, but, uh, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. I, we all get that at, way, right? At the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. I'm a human being and I make mistakes and I've made a lot of them, but I just shake it off and try to just, uh, we, I had a, I had someone that like, even through COVID, like I did three videos through COVID, all of COVID. And, um, it, wow. it, I, I heard multiple people thank me because, you know, it was a depressing time. And the yeah. fact that I was able to just get someone through the next day, because I was, I was a teacher, I was pretty miserable, but the YouTube was an outlet for me, and I found that it was helping other people kind of get through some misery. Us as well, like yeah. uh, doing our streams through COVID was a lot of fun, yeah. and a lot of people were watching yeah. because you know they they couldn't go out, they couldn't yeah. meet with their friends, and it was like a gathering place. Yeah. I know for me. Because he, he, I mean, you stream with Darcy and Erlen as well. And when yeah. COVID hit, no right. one could come over. Yeah. So I went from being on the on the show sort of Half every two weeks to twice a week. Yeah. And I was initially nervous. But then as COVID dragged on and people couldn't leave yeah. and you couldn't meet with friends, I started to really appreciate yeah. like chatting with people in the chat, people interacting with us. So like in a lot of ways... It really helped I us really, through COVID. Yeah, it yeah. helped us through COVID as well, yeah. like having that outlet and people coming in and, and joining us like every Tuesday and every Friday. Very cool. Uh, so, yeah, Very cool. it was positive. It, it yeah. felt it was positive for us and hopefully for other people. too. And, and that's so. what we get out of, you know, doing the show, going to conventions, yeah. Yeah. Uh, meeting people, yeah. you know, doing panels, yeah. whatever, you know, interacting with the community. We I, I I mean we get a lot out of it yeah. and I hope the people that watch and interact yeah. with us get get the same feeling back. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think we're on the same same page with that. I'm I mean yeah. we're both introverts. Oh yeah. So but <laughs> but we love doing this and, yeah. and it doesn't seem like we're introverts <laughs> when we go and do all this, but yeah, we get we get I get drained anyway after going to a convention and talking for three days. So how does it how is it for you um, when you go to a convention and you're on, on. for three days yeah, straight and, and con- yeah. or more? Or content sometimes. creators are different. Uh, I did just sign with the agent. So General Malice is my agent. I saw that. And I want to yeah. thank him. Uh, uh, that's Part of that is to take the stress out of planning for new shows. So um, I'm always looking for new shows to nice. go. You can go to general malice now for me, but uh, <laughs> Hit him up. I love it. So um, I'm an extrovert, but I'm an extrovert in small group. So like a classroom, I love it. Uh, one-on-one. Nice. I love it. A really big convention like PAX. I hate it. Mm. 
I don't like it. <laughs> it's too crowded, too and I, I feel squished. But if it's like the happy mm. medium, so like even PRGE was okay. If and then part of the reason of having a table is people can come up, you can talk to them. Um, I right. like having a table just for having my own space where I can sit down. Sometimes my back, I have back issues getting older, and uh, mm. it's nice to sit down and, and take a breather. Um, before when I didn't have a table, I would walk and I would I would be walking up to like ten miles at shows. And I, and I had more back wow. issues. Yeah. And so uh, by having a table, I'm cutting down my walking by half. And so I'm only walking five miles. Smart. And so, <laughs> um, and so I enjoy that. Um, but, yeah, I do about 10 shows a year, and I love it. Um, I like two-day shows better than three-day shows. It all depends. Like, it's tough because, like, people don't realize, like, it's time away from your family. Um, you know, your food's not covered typically on shows. And so your ho- yeah. your hotel and travel are paid for. I'm grateful for that. But there's always these extra costs that come up. And so, like, mm-hmm. part of me offering published homebrew games is to cover those extra costs or just the fun of taking that extra money and then applying it to publish a new game. And so um, right. <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I've been doing it for over 10 years now and uh, will continue to do it. I have some upcoming projects that I'm really excited. Uh, you know, I have about nine to ten games offered. Everything from everything from Game Boy Advance, Atari 2600. I have a Sega yeah. Genesis and Super Nintendo game, even a Jaguar version of Blockum Sockum, free to download or Atari yes. age. And so, oh, awesome. Oh, <laughs> get that in here. But yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> so many different consoles you cover with your uh, with your 7800. Games. And so, if you're interested yeah. in any of that, just message me on Atari age. That's the easiest way. Or my email. You can just drop my email. So. Oh, yeah. That that question wasn't on my list, but what is S-W-L-O-V-I-N? S-W-L-O-V-I-N. I don't even know how to say it. Okay, great story. S-W-L-O-V-I-N. Great story. Okay. <laughs> okay, I was drinking with friends. So it always starts off. I was early 20s <laughs> drinking with friends. Okay. Yeah. And my friend was pointing at his friends. Hey, you're the, you're the, you know, toy lovinist. And you're the, you know, car Levinist. And he looked at me and he goes, you're the Star Wars Levinist. And so, oh, you know, a couple okay. drinks back, you know, maybe a slight slur. But uh, I was a huge <laughs> Star Wars fan. So I, I, uh, I collected a lot of Star Wars stuff before uh, in the early 90s kind of shifted my Star Wars collection to just video games. So I had a big Star Wars collection, sold it at a flea mart for nothing, like nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just wow. took that money and converted it to collect video games. Mm. Yeah, which were also worth nothing yeah. at that time, too. So yeah. it, it all evened yeah. out. Yeah, so like I literally had, like, you know, it was all like the power of the force, like the second wave of the 90s. So it's all like that stuff, but okay. complete collections. Yeah. And I had them in tubs wow. trying to sell them at a flea mart on a bad, <laughs> kind of a bad year. And then finally, oh, a guy. I think I sold it all for like five hundred bucks or something like. Mm. And and now wow. it's like probably worth more than that, but I didn't care. Yep, yeah, that's how I it didn't works. care. <laughs> I was happy to take that. At the time, five hundred bucks yeah. was probably like five thousand dollars, and so I was super excited. Right. Yeah. Went to Funko Land and started collecting Nintendo games. <laughs> so, uh, nice. nice. So you uh, you mentioned you have a lot of connections with a lot of companies and they give you a lot of stuff. So if if there's a product or a company that you want to talk about on your YouTube channel that you have maybe concerns with or you don't like uh, what what they're putting out or whatever, what is your approach to that? Because it seems that a lot of channels take really extreme positions on it's the best thing ever or it's the worst thing ever. It's going to sink the company. Um, and you know, some or where something that they don't like comes out or something that they like. It it's always seems extreme. Yeah, so what's I, what's your Well, approach? I'm not extreme. Um I think I think <laughs> if I'm being honest, I'm probably on the slight optimism side. Some would say I'm extreme optimism. Um I've worked with companies in <laughs> yeah. the past that let's just say I won't call them by name, but a company sent me a product that ended up not being what they offered on the shelves. And I will never mm. cover that product again. So how I deal with it is uh, right. if you send me junk or uh, <laughs> do that to me, I will never cover your product again. 
So that's my right. my way of dealing with a company is to never talk about them because I feel that's the best way of dealing with a company that sucks. <laughs> I'll never talk about yeah. you, which is worse than talking about you. <laughs> it, it really so, is. Um, and I, that's usually my approach, too. I just avoid things that are just not it, worth talking it's just about. It's not worth it. Or, it's not. Like, I, it, yeah. I, I don't like drama. I don't like negativity. No, do we have a ton of that. We have people that have built their channels around it. And I want nothing yeah. to do with that. I want nothing to do with that. And that's fine. I, I don't wish anybody hate or ill will. It's just... At the end of the day, I ask myself, if I die and my kids see my videos, am I proud of the work that I do? And I, right. and I, and I, and, and, and like, you know, for other people, they may want to just talk about whatever, but not me. I, I just enjoy it. I have kids in my class. Hey, I saw your video. Like, okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel bad about anything yeah. I typically say. Um, on a video, I yep. try to keep it pretty clean and, and just uh, PG, PG-13 tops, typically. Yeah. And that's that's kind of, that's pretty much why I wanted you to be yeah. on here, because we are on the same same yeah. wavelength. We we don't, we try not to swear no. on our show. We <laughs> it, don't swear. We don't, yeah, if, if we get really mad at a game. Occasionally it slips out, but it's certainly not <laughs> yeah. intentional. And we're, we're very positive yeah. on the show. Um optimistic yeah. <laughs> at, at points maybe a little overly optimistic yeah. about things um with products that are like oh what are you what are you doing guy why do you, why are you making this product <laughs> it's like but you know they're trying it's, it's whatever you know we yeah. try and be optimistic mm. and give people the benefit of the doubt and just avoid drama avoid controversy yeah. and you know it's it's worked out we're enjoying what we do and we don't attract the drama yeah. by not being involved in the drama it doesn't come to us yeah because we're not yeah. ber berating people yeah you know? it's tough too because i think there's a difference between like someone trolling and uh, being objective and so i've learned yeah mm. over time to be more objective and there's times i've mm. missed things in a review not meaning so not meaning to just mm. oops didn't catch that. Oh, yeah. It and, happens all the time and, to us. Um, it's <laughs> tough. Sometimes people are more uh, hateful or they, they don't have strong social skills or maybe they're on the spectrum, if I'm being completely honest, and they just say it. They just say it in a comment or something of like, you missed that. Yep. And it's like they're, yeah. <laughs> they're on the other side. They don't see the other side of it. We're producing and the amount of time and effort in reviewing something is like, oh, I, I didn't catch that. Um, I've gotten better yeah. at that. Um, I'm still working on that. Um, that's taken yeah. time to craft. Uh, I have a style. I have a review style. Um, you know, I think my Atari 50 review is pretty good. And that was well received um, when that first came out. I'm going to be covering the uh, what expanded edition. And, and another nice. side note about that, uh, part of my collection is actually the box scans in that. So... Yeah, oh, so wow. Star That's Strike awesome. and Atari Video Cube and uh, right. and uh, the uh, Sears exclusive games, uh, some of them are from my collection, the scan. Oh, so, yeah. really nice. That's small, awesome. Small, that you're small able footnote. to contribute yeah, to it. Yeah, small footnote. <laughs> yeah, but, but stuff like I've learned, like I have an Evercade Alpha review coming up, and so I haven't even unboxed it. And so yeah. you just have to, you have to like be aware of like, Okay, if someone's looking at your view, they're paying money for the product, and so you have to try to yes. be objective and like at least notice things yeah. that are concerning, uh, especially if it yeah. doesn't work, <laughs> or if there's like major <laughs> yes. issues. Yeah. Like you have to you have to cover those, and you know, yes. uh, I've I've made mistakes in the past, and I just have had to deal with that and just okay, I made a mistake. Oops, you know, <laughs> yeah. It, it happens. And I and I usually err on the side of not giving information that I don't know about and giving information yeah. that I'm very positive about, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, may lead to lack of information. But I'd rather not be speculative about something um, than misspeak about something. Yep. And uh, Nostalgic says, I appreciate ZPH finding something positive and encouraging in pretty much every homebrew they play in the show that's so impor important to creators. Yeah. And I, I review the smallest games to the biggest yeah. games. 
because I want to encourage the community yeah. mm -hmm. to make more and be better. Yeah. Um, if anything, I'm going to be like critical to encourage them to yeah. say this was this was not quite good, but I give solutions too. It's like, yeah. well, you could do this or add this into the game mm. and always spinning it in a positive direction, I think is better for everyone and the community and the developers rather than just being down yeah. on, on people and just say, you did, you did a great job. You made a game. That's yeah. amazing yeah. <laughs> to make Especially a game. Atari. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. It is. And you know, you got to give them kudos for at least, you know, getting there to that bar and you just encourage them to do more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and on that kind of similar note, what is your approach to detractors, trolls, and how has that changed over the years? I think I was really naive when I first started YouTube where like, oh, this is like the ugly part of being public. And I was not even aware of how hate hateful people could be. So... Yeah. Uh, one thing about when you become on, you know, people know who you are, you're going to get people that hate you because you're popular. You're going to hate, hate you because you hang out with X amount of person or, you know, you're part of that crew. Um, you yeah. get people that just say a bunch of terrible things. Um, people that don't know you speculate. And if you don't talk about it, they fill in the blanks with half truths that aren't the whole story. That's really what it comes down yes. to. And yeah. um, there's people that just, they won't like you. Uh, you can walk down the street. This is this is statistical. Yeah. And you'll have 90 out of 100 people like you just by looking at you. They, they, they see their <laughs> vibe or see your vibe. or um, And then you're going to yeah. have 10 out of 100 people. doesn't matter what you do. They're not going to like you. And yeah. the public yeah. is no different. In fact, it's probably more like, 70 30 uh or maybe 80 <laughs> yeah. 20 they're uh because they are behind yeah. a keyboard they're behind yeah. a monitor yeah. they're I mean, so like you're gonna have and, and and you know what uh there's been people that have been giving me objective criticism but then there's also people that just say stupid stuff and i just don't yeah. care anymore without thinking i just don't like <laughs> you're yeah. you're a keyboard warrior saying something behind an avatar. You don't know me. You think you know me. You think you, I have some agenda, whatever. I don't care. I don't know you. I don't want to know you, whatever. I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm 48. Yeah. And if you don't like me, do the mature thing and watch something else. Yeah. Rather than <laughs> complain and keep watching something yeah. you apparently don't like. Yeah. yeah it's so yeah, weird. Yeah. And I just, you know, and I, whatever, if someone doesn't like me, okay, be the mature person and just watch something else then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I've, I've had to deal with it over yeah. the years. I've been streaming online in the public since 1999. Holy cow. Um, <laughs> I've, I've done radio shows and video shows that whole time on the internet. So yeah, you just, you just, I just ignore yeah. it now. Yeah. I just don't care. You don't feed the trolls yep. is the, the saying. And um, I don't respond. And sometimes just block yep. them. Yep. Just get rid of them. Yep. So they, block they shadow can't ban. make the... And I got, you know, yep. people had an issue with that. It's like, I'd rather do that than just engage. Because it's like, just yeah. don't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, their negativity does not need to nope. come here. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Um, so that's that's good. Like eight bit poet says, that's a healthy attitude. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I've and I've gotten better at it too. Like I I went through a therapy. Um, I yep. I had a counselor. Uh, there was a time uh, years ago, depressed, and um, yep. I just didn't know when I first experienced it. I didn't, I didn't like what is this? Like this is not why I do content creation, but I was new at yeah. the time, newer about it, and I was like. This is, and like a lot of people said, you quit. You got to just quit it. And I'm like, I don't want to quit it because I don't want people to think that that beat me. And I enjoyed right. creating content, but um, I had to be more objective about dealing with separating criticism from trolling and listen to yes. the criticism, especially yeah. if it's legit. 
and avoid the trolls. Yeah. And I, I got better at that yeah. and kind of like went over the hump, I, I guess. I, I hit a point where it's like, you know, because the thing about trolls is like they'll just move on to something else when you're not popular. And it's like they'll just move on to <laughs> yeah, the other yeah. giant. I call it giant killing, too, because it's they always troll on someone that's like made it, you know, and it's like you just move on yeah. and whatever you become. You don't become the shiny object anymore. And it's like they just move on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yep, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, and, and it is it is challenging, even just reading it, even if it's one out of a thousand yep. comments, it really just rolls around yep. in your mind. And you really have to concentrate yep. on just moving past it and looking at the 999 yep. other positive comments, loving yep. your content. Because I know when I first started the stream, people didn't understand what I was doing. Yep. Like they just didn't grasp the concept that I'm doing long, long form streaming content. Yep. And they're like, we just want five minute video. Just, I just want to see some gameplay and move on. It's like, that's there's other videos for that. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Um, so there's always going to be detractors yeah. of you're not doing it right. You're not doing it the way I want yeah. it. And it's like, well, you know, you'll eventually find your niche, and those people will just go away. And yeah. and the people that love you will stick around. That's right. And it's that's those are the people you need to concentrate on. And that's that's what yeah. I did. And I just kept going. <laughs> I had someone, one of your fans, come up to me at the uh, Pinball Expo and knew that oh, I was yeah. going to be a special guest on your channel. And they were excited. Oh, wow. They were big fans of oh, you. Wow. I don't know if they're in the, or they're watching this right now. I remember you coming up. Oh, they were excited. Probably. They're big fans of you. And like, hey, you're going to be on Zero Page Homebrew. I'm like, absolutely. I'm excited about that. <laughs> so that's, that's the awesome. type of stuff that like. I have a local, a loyal fan base, and those comments just mean the world to me. And I try to comment when I yes. can. I have uh, regulars that have watched me for over a decade, and I'm grateful for every single person that just tunes in. And uh, those yeah. are just wonderful. I just hang on to those, and uh, at the end of the day, it means the world. So it does. Yeah, yeah. It it. Anytime I'm down, I know there's. Uh, a message coming that says i love what you're yeah. doing and that'll just bring me right back up yes absolutely yeah. so let's get to the main yeah. feature the homebrew yeah. games this show's about <laughs> homebrew right. so let's turn on the 7800 okay. and <laughs> let, let tanya take a run at it and we'll start discussing yeah. Here it uh, is. The homebrew. so we're going to be playing that's the Woo! one so we're going to be playing block em, sock em okay. by john hancock and daryl Genther. Yeah, daryl Daryl gets all the a lot of credit for this because um, the history the history is so this was on Sega Genesis first it was ported to Super Nintendo then reboot did their own version for Jaguar and then yep and then this was the who's in the chat this was the fourth <laughs> oh. Was that oh, a, I was at an expo no. and Daryl asked Daryl hey would you be interested in porting this to 7800 and he yeah. just said yes and he started working on it wow and i i loved <laughs> popeye so popeye and i'm so happy yes. for him and opcode picking up his game uh oh and he has too. others That's too so I, mean, I know you've covered them on your channel uh this, oh yeah and he so great so daryl this is one of daryl's i do believe like taking a port but like not his game but doing an original game but what's really cool about him is he incorporated a lot of extra features that were um, not in the original release. So score bonus and a whole bunch of other things. Atari box support. Um, Yamaha sound. So the thing that's important about yes. this is that if you play this on a 2600 plus with firmware updates or the upcoming 7800 plus, it will have a unique soundtrack. Yamaha sound. Which very few yep. 7800 games can do that, which is cool about the 7800 and Plus, few. is that you can yep. take that not so great Tia sound and make it beautiful. Yep. <laughs> Even better than Pokemon. Yeah. So, like, anyway, I can and go on. It sounds absolutely great, this this game. And, and we're playing it through the 7800 game drive, which does support that as well. So 
So, besides Nintendo, your largest playlist for retro games on YouTube channels for Atari. And you cover a lot of Atari homebrew on your channel, which is, of course, what we mostly yeah. focus on. We stray here and there, we get a vector. Yeah. Um, so, what keeps you interested in new games for classic consoles, in particular Atari? Because not many, not many channels focus on homebrew, so it's, it's awesome that you do homebrew. I don't know. I think I got early kind of intrigued by it because a, a lot of people don't know I was one of the original organizers of the Portland Help. Retro Gaming Expo. Help. Help. And before that, Something's wrong with the ZPH I was stream. part oh. of uh, the Northwest... Oh, the music's too loud. We good? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah we're good. So the, Nat, yeah. The, the Northwest Classic Games Enthusiast was the organization that Rick Weiss was part of before PRGE. And so they, right. early on, had homebrewers back then, and this is in early 2000s. And so I think my yeah. exposure to the homebrew scene was intriguing. Um, at first, there was like more hacks than actual homebrews, but an yeah. early an early homebrew back in the day was Ladybug. And Ladybug was a fantastic, it would debuted at NWCGE, like one of the last ones, 2007. And so right. they made a special yep. box for it. It's Champ Games, one of their early games. At yeah, it's a great version. Is that the white cartridge Coleco version no, of it? It's even before that. Oh, it's a different yeah, one. Yeah, it's like Oh wow. It's it's even before that. And so it was before Atari Age sold it. So Okay. And okay. so like we're talking it might have been the white card. I, I have to open up my box. But so the box, <laughs> there was no box for the yep. first release. It was a card. And then later on, okay. I think uh, Mark Oberhauser made a box for it. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, that's different than the Ladybug that they made afterwards. They made it better with an arm chip. I think this was Ladybug before yeah. the arm chip. And then they made one Still with the great, enhanced. Great, great version. Both. But anyways, yeah. it's over there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Oh, I'll, go I'll go show it. One more. Oh yeah, I'd love to see All it right. actually. Oh, there we go. There we go. For excellent. Okay. I just want to apologize. I don't want to make collectors cry, but I'm gonna make you cry. <laughs> so this box, oh, this box, yeah. the NWCGE edition. So it is a ColecoVision, I think the case. But yeah, um, I don't know if the cart. Yep. But this one has that. That one's the different yeah, one. That, yeah. Yep. yep. But anyways, um, I think it might have been a Clico cartridge. I'm pretty sure yep. they might have used that. But it's it's honestly, if I'm being really honest, so long ago I forgot. It's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Champ Games is probably a pretty good starting point if you want to get into homebrew. That's for sure. Yeah, so... There's just a lot there. And then uh, this is a limited edition number two, by the way. So Rick Weiss has oh, number wow. one. And I have two because of course. I was the number two guy uh, helping yeah. him with promoting what became the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I was the gentleman, the extrovert. That's amazing. That would go into stores promoting, hey, we got this upcoming show. Would you like to be a vendor? And so we kind of did this like nice. Blues Brothers drive around. Portland area, and then I was the extrovert yeah. that would talk. Well, PRG has turned into the the mecca for video gaming in North America, retro video gaming in North yeah. America. We've been going to it since 2013, huh? which is not super yeah. long, but so long. Uh, 11 years, yeah. and we just, it's the highlight of our year. Yeah. It's so much fun. It's true, yeah. You get to meet, see all your friends that you that you know online. You get to see developers, and I, I interview them. And yeah. yeah, it's just a, it's really, really great time when the fire bell isn't going off. That's true, yes. <laughs> yeah, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sucked. Um, so let's talk about the homebrews yeah. that you made. You showed the yeah. first one that yeah. you made. So let's let's take a look okay. through them, and, um, and and talk a little bit about your relationship with Jason uh, Shellhorn, aka uh, Gemini. Yeah, Tronic, so Jason and sev several games that he's made with you. Over yeah, the years. so he's been wonderful to work with. I did Genesis projects with him too, um, and so that's just some of the 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 journey that I've 
done with him has been fantastic. So I talked about Game Panic. The next project that yep. we did is actually my best seller. And this is Catacombs of Chaos. And this is a fantastic yep. action. Uh, it's got some roguelike kind of things in it. It's got procedurally generated en enemies. Nice. Um, don't yeah. know if you played this. It's great. I'll offer, I'll offer my games on itch.io. Tiny it's bit. on the Atari VCS, yeah. and I have a physical release, both loose and complete. But, uh, yes, yeah, so Corey Kramer is my artist who's done Ninja Wall Jump. Uh, he did the box art for that. Time Salvo. So Time good. Salvo on so 7800 and some other, yeah. uh, and some other releases. Anyways, Does great second release... Work. My first run of this and Game Panic was for charity event that I did for almost 10 years, Calitz Gamers for Kids, raised $100,000 yeah. for uh, local wow. uh, local nonprofits. Okay. That's so awesome. So next up, Retro Game Quest. This plays a lot like Inve Adventure Meets Inspector Gadget. And so I worked with <laughs> him, mul Jason, multiple games. He, he would have an idea or an engine. He would modify it for my liking. Um he was easy yeah. to work with, uh, enjoyable, uh, and friendly. Yeah. And typically, we do a run, and then like I split proceeds with them. I bought all the uh, distribution rights from him from these. Um, just right. a really wonderful guy. I just enjoyed working with him over the years. Still working with him, by the way. Yeah. And uh, an upcoming <laughs> yeah. Sega Genesis game, fingers crossed. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he's very uh, very active in the scene, yeah. very prolific, lots of games. Yeah. yeah. So I can announce that uh, the next Catacombs sequel is going to be on Sega Genesis. Oh, yeah, wow. So, oh, that's so great. So we'll see where that goes. I mean, I have so many games, uh, yeah. so many irons in the fire. It's hard to like of course. what's next. But uh, he is going to be doing the sequel, and it's on his timeline. But I'm really looking forward to yeah. working with him. Now, this next one is funny. And so uh, I really liked how this turned out. Uh, we did Game Panic 2 for Sega Genesis. And then that was a PRGE yeah. like 2013 release on Sega CD and Genesis. And uh, yeah. I offer that on my U. I offer that on itch.io and digital. It's it's and it's an OK game. But this one yeah. that he um, Corey Kramer is the most amazing artist. So it looks like a post office <laughs> logo. If you look closely, yeah. though, yeah. It's a USPS. joystick. Oh, I've never noticed it's a joystick. that. It always always looked like yeah. an eagle to me, and I never looked yeah. close at it. That's and so great. So post office people have bought this for for their friends because it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, my person, my friend works at a post office. Anyways, this plays like a Clico tabletop. So it has sixteen stages. They're randomly selected. The best way to describe yeah. it is it plays like a Game and Watch Donkey Kong Junior. Nice. So, yeah. okay, that. Um, and then five bazillion. Okay, real quick. On a side note, uh, you can yep. play these on Evercade. These are my Calitz Gamers Adventure and Second Adventure. They're really well done. Okay. I, I published them for charity, but really, MT is the, the artist and programmer behind these. They're absolutely phenomenal. The second Calitz Gamer Second Adventure. I put this up as one of the best NES homebrews out on the market. It's two player and it has a wow. different ending. So much fun. Um, the first one, which oh, was wow. really simple, but the artwork on it's just fantastic. And he was the artist. And oh, like, so awesome. what's cool about this release, um, he did hand drawn art, and then I got one of the copies. And so my kids are the main characters. Oh. So even though my daughter, oh, my daughter's awesome. Asian, but um, but yeah, the characters yep. are actually based on my kids. And so. Oh, that's. And so, so he cool. did a lot of little extras in it. Um, so, I love arcade games, and so I commissioned yep. a NES developer to make Turtles for, for the NES. And so, I released yes. this for charity long ago. It's super expensive, hard to find now. I got new artwork yep. from Corey Kramer, and it's and it's on Game <laughs> ah. Boy Advance. Oh, and then, wow. um, I'm oh, going to offer great. it on NES again with the new artwork and a slight ROM change. Oh, so. nice. That's so great. that's that, yeah, and it's... the five bazillion yep. versions of Blockum Sockum. <laughs> There's the stack. So yeah. 7800, which so you're playing, playing, and you can get this at Atari yeah. Age. I do have some limited copies yeah. now, and if people want right. these, I have about 10 copies left. Right, from PRG, you had them yeah. at PRG. Yeah. In television, I had I had that, and that's I did 100, 100, 
copies, sold it strictly on Atari Age and in person. Yeah. About 20 copies left of that. It sold really well. Wow. It has Intellivoice. That's great. So it's a homebrew with Intellivoice. Oh, nice. And so that's fun. Oh, that's great. And then the two, uh, I have the Super Nintendo version, which has different voice of Bauckham Sockham, and they all play different. They, they play similar to each other, but they all have different version sound or voice or different things. And the first version made right. was uh, Sega Genesis. Okay, so that's the yeah. original one, and each one successively, you know, changed a bit, added a few things. Yeah. Daryl's yeah. is, it's tough because I'm sure we're going to talk about it. <laughs> We, we are okay, a little bit. Okay, but Daryl's yeah. knocked it out of the park. Like, he really went out of his oh, way. it's so nice. And, it's so nice and looking. It's like, and, and the sound. And, yeah. and so, yeah. he has a friend, though. So, he has a friend. And we're going to talk about this a little bit. But, like, he has a friend. Yeah. And he worked with his friend. And his friend kind of yeah. took Daryl's game and just mind-blowing what uh, PlaySoft <laughs> has done. Amped it up. So. Yep, yep. So we'll look, look at that right at the yeah. end, just before. Um, let's see. So besides being on cartridge, yeah. some of your homebrews are available through the Atari VCS, yes. um, such as Catacombs of Chaos, Retro Game Quest, Game Panic 3. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Atari? Yeah, yeah so I it's like been one of the easiest companies to work with that's like, I would say, bigger than yes. small. Like Evercade... And or Blaze Entertainment and Atari are by far some of the easiest companies to work with because, like, um, I was active on Atari Age, and I think that really helped because the VCS yeah. forum, I got to uh, contact with the, the people involved with that. And so they literally yeah. just took my ROM and did all the other work and put it on the VCS store. They liked it. Yeah. Uh, I think they were looking yeah. for content. Yeah. And it was yes. really nice. And so I know the VCS has had some problems and I've been pretty objective in talking about it. I, I do an update yep. on my, I've talked, done several videos on the VCS. Every six months I kind of yep. do an update. And I was an original backer. Yep. Um, oh, I was wow. original backer yep. and uh, I've enjoyed c covering content. And so uh, Blockham Sockham for the 7800 is also on it. The downside, oh, the nice. only downside is uh, we're trying to get the Yamaha sound to work on the VCS version oh. and that's not available yeah. yet. So right. um, I don't know they because it should work, but it's on their end. Um, I've reached out and they're trying to figure it out. I don't know if they'll ever fix it, but um, fingers crossed. Okay. So the emulator that the 7800 games running on does support it does. YM sound. It, it but, does yeah, support awesome. it, but oh, for whatever reason, they can't get it to work. So Womp womp. Okay. Well, hopefully yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah, I found Atari really, really easy to work with as yeah. well. Um, they're really great guys. I mean, I interviewed them on the show. Yeah. And, like all yeah, of them. They're, they're, they're really So, great. like, I cover yeah. their hardware. I cover, like, um, you know, the 2600 plus, the 70. I'm going to be covering the 7800 yeah. plus. But then, like, yeah. stuff from Digital Eclipse, I just got confirmation I'm going to be covering Atari 50, the, the console, first console nice. war. DLC on my channel, um, and then just other other games that they publish. I'm like more than happy to do it, just because a yep. clear communication and b very yep. transparent. Hey, talk about this yep. on this day. Where you do you, <laughs> you cover it. I, I really like it when companies kind of give me freedom. We want you to talk about the good and yes. bad, and Atari is really upfront about that. Don't candy coat it. Um, and even <laughs> with like yep. the 2600 plus, I said. I give it a pass, but what I was trying to yeah. say is like I give it like a seven out of ten, and some of the Atari yeah. company thought that I would say like pass it up, and so sometimes oh, it was like a language oh no. barrier. But like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I liked it. Yeah. I just when the twenty six hundred plus came out, I wanted to have full homebrew support, which it didn't, and so I talked about yeah. that. But yeah, now that's been fixed. Even Pitfall two works, so. Yep, yep, they're they're improving it all the time, yeah. and you know that's that's the whole thing of like in being encouraging yeah. to the community and people yeah. who support the community, yeah. like Atari. We want Atari yes. to succeed yes. in we, yes. the community. Yeah, I exactly. mean, like they got some really really cool things planned that I don't know about, but I've been yeah. alluded to 
that they got some really cool things. <laughs> like I'm even like lit up just talking about it. But like, I mean, yeah, they got the right people. I think making Atari better than we ever could possibly imagine. I know some people yeah. are always going to look at it as a different Atari. And I, I just see yeah. it differently. I see it all yeah. the time. They're, they're like, it's not the same Atari as X year, yeah. whatever year they feel that Atari yeah. lost its mojo. And I'm like, no, they've got the yeah. name, they've got the money, they've got the right people yeah. working there, and they're improving it constantly over yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, every... I, I'm like, I'm not a fanboy yeah. for them, but I think they're doing a great job where they are now and... What they've told me of what's yeah. coming in the future and what they're working on, it's really encouraging. Yeah, it is encouraging, really, really. and, and they're, they're they're making yeah. um, some really really nice moves. And I have to say, uh, it's it's really nice to have a company with an ear to uh, a forum, and now that they own the forum, yes. but like they're doing some really cool things. And so, uh, I don't know of many other larger companies that are doing what Atari is doing, and I think Atari is really kind of supporting the homebrew i mean okay so they took robert yes. dacre zenzo's yeah. bentley bearer and now it's packing it in yeah. with the 7800 plus can you believe that that's happening How much better in 2024 it's amazing. amazing i am like i can't when i heard when i saw that <laughs> announcement i like like flipped yeah. out i flipped i yelled yeah my wife's like Are you okay and i'm like i am <laughs> one of my favorite programmers is finally being recognized by the company yeah and like how many other yes. companies would say like Oh, you can't do that with our mascot. We're going to discontinue that yeah. or a C and D yeah. looking at you, Nintendo. Yep. Um, just saying, <laughs> yes. just saying, looking at you, yes. Nintendo. Sega probably would have worked with them. Yep. Sega's like actually cooler. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I just, oh my gosh, I got me excited. They're, they're, they're <laughs> embracing the, they're embracing the community. Yeah. They're platforming the community. They're giving opportunities to the people that helped keep Atari alive for decades yeah. when they were making speaker yeah. hats. You know, that they were considered a joke for many, many years. They made some poor and, moves. You know, they made some poor moves. Yeah. I would say, um, I wish this, uh, the, the, even the VCS, which was under different management, uh, they, they kept that on the market. Like they could have easily just killed it and they didn't. Yeah. Um, I'm really interested to see what else, they do um all i know is that it looks yeah. like they're working on several things um which i do yes. not know about i honestly don't yeah uh but i think there's okay. some things alluded uh things alluded that i think people are going to be excited about i think yeah. so too i think they're going to be excited for the future of what atari is doing especially in the homebrew community yeah. as well uh and the support that they're giving and yeah they're going to be continuing to yeah. do that that's for sure um so tell us a little bit about the game that we're seeing right on the screen the development of block and sock and where did the idea come from and who is involved with the inception of the okay game? so adam welch of second dimension gets a lot of credit because the source code of the sega genesis game was utilized for several other versions including upcoming ones unannounced right. ColecoVision's coming okay 5208 nice. wow. bit. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and yep. then the ColecoVision code will be shared with a Sega Master System version as well. Oh, so, wow. That's um, awesome. And so I have dreams and hopes <laughs> of offering that worldwide, including Brazil. So, um, wow. Yep. They'll love so that. <laughs> we're, we're, fingers crossed. Um, the programmer uh, is in uh, Tasmania. And so it's been coding oh, wow. a long time. So, anyways, I'm really excited. Yep about that but so the idea of block em, sock em, what came from i like puzzle games so adam welch yeah. gets huge credit for this um and yeah. so he kind of like fleshed out an idea i just wanted to do a puzzle game and he wanted to do it like flip nick and some other kind of puzzle games on game boy advance and nintendo and came up with something fairly unique um that was kind of mm -hmm. a self-promotion knowing that i was going to sell it at shows and he still is publishing this for me. And so he provides all the raw materials and sells it to me at cost yeah. and wanted nothing for this game. And like, wow. and then he wow. got a friend who's a friend of mine, Sergio Elizondo, El Elizondo, who's Sergio in the holograms. He's a musician. He did the soundtrack and just a, just Great a wonderful, music, yeah. wonderful person. 
And to have my uh, friend that I was friends with just donate a, a, a music soundtrack to it. And then he worked on yeah. some other versions of it. Uh, just means the world to me. Like it was just fantastic. And then, and then other people joined in and did ports. And so, um, you know, the, the Super Nintendo one was done by Alec Mall Studio, who uh, was very mm -hmm. gracious and did this. And um, and then uh, Brian's Man Cave ported it to Intellivision. Yeah. Reboot yeah, ported yeah. it to Jaguar. And then Daryl. Cyrano, Cyrano J's in the chat. Lawrence Stavely is in the chat. I mean, so, yeah. amazing. I mean, He's reboot, great. man. Folks are oh, awesome. Oh, yeah, reboots. Hold, holding down the Jaguar port. Oh, my gosh, port. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, they did a really good job with the Jaguar port. And uh, that was a free, that was a, uh, it's a free to download. And you can play in Big P. Um, so the, the agreement was that, was that it was a free game. And then uh, Albert's offering a, a, um, a box copy at an Atari age. And so. Um, oh, that's, that's awesome. How awesome is that? So, I mean, it's a puzzle game. I think it's yeah. well done. Uh, 25 levels for it the is. base game. Daryl added some yeah. demo levels and uh, yeah. a scoring system. It's like a bonus, like a bonus feature and some extra features yeah. that are just really kind of set it apart. Uh, I, I think it's one of the better versions. Yeah, Tanya, Tanya was practicing it yesterday, so she wouldn't uh, look too bad today. <laughs> Uh, she beat all the levels on normal, yeah. mm -hmm. and she's playing it on hard no, today. No, no, normal. I'm still oh, playing normal. it on normal. Yeah, okay. back to normal. Okay. Yeah, hard. <laughs> we started on hard, and I was like, this is really yeah, hard. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And, and I think... It's really hard. Yeah, I wanted it to be like a balance, and Daryl kind of made it, I think, for me, like, you can play it or you can master it, and, and like, the age range mm -hmm. is from 5 to 80. Uh, we didn't want a time limit. Yeah. So we wanted people, if, if maybe, maybe people that aren't super coordinated can have time to methodically figure out positioning and so we yeah. wanted that uh that was important to us um later yeah. on i had a friend reach out hey i'd love to play your game but i'm colorblind and so the intellivision version yes. has a colorblind friendly mode in it and i i had my friend play test it and he, he says it, it works great so and other That's levels great. and other ports including the upcoming 5200 8-bit and ColecoVision version, there's going to be features in those that make them colorblind friendly. That's so just great. an accessibility yeah. issue. So um, I, I'm a big supporter of, I think games is a way where people of, of all different abilities should, should be able to do enjoy it. And so yep. uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of having accessibility in games when, when we can. And so just so yeah. it's, it's just a small thing. It's not like a big thing, but it makes me feel good that because uh, color, you know, puzzle games have a lot of color in them. And a lot of times there's yes. people that are colorblind and can't play them. And so at and, all. And so yeah. offering that ability uh, was important to me. And, and Brian's Man Cave did a good job with that. And so uh, future yeah. ports will have that feature in them. Oh, that's that's really great. I remember playing a game on the show that you didn't need to see to play it was all audio That's cool. uh with the atari 2600 and things got louder and you know and quieter and you had to move around and so i'm i'm a big proponent of accessibility in games as well and it's really great that that's being added into new versions of block and soccer so i think it's time right. to uh give a little sneak preview of something that's coming What's up this? for Blockum Soccer. What's Sockham. this? Oh, oh, look at so, that. So, real quick. That's awesome. Um, huge shout out. Oh, one second. Sorry. Uh, go for it. Huge yeah, shout out to Playsoft. So, Playsoft will be talking about this and announcing the, the full details on Atari Age of just what he did. So, if you're not aware, Playsoft did the amazing port of scramble for 8-bit and it's really well done so his version he took yes. what daryl did and he worked with daryl by the way on this and took his own spin oh, of this nice. pokey sound and uh really some crazy like graphic features including a mode that's colorblind friendly which has been confirmed by my friend to be uh, a win just did a fantastic job and uh, I'm really excited. 
I'm currently working on sourcing parts, so I don't have a great 3D printed shell. This is one that SIO2 is a prototype. I'm probably going to be just sourcing 5,200 carts, but um, my goal is to offer yep. it on Atari Age. Self-published, I'll be publishing this, and rest assured that some will be offered on Atari Age when I have this next year. So it's going to be debuting awesome. in 2025. Um, I don't know the demand. I don't care. It's we'll we'll make some and hopefully sell through. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my, my yeah. Like, I, oh, I'll make some, and if people like them, we'll keep making them. And if not, well, that was a fun run. So <laughs> I think a anybody who collects for the fifty two hundred is going to be all over this because it's a, a small but dedicated community. Yeah. So we're we're showing it on the screen right now. Just a, a quick yeah. couple levels. Yeah. Um, and this is the Atari 8 yeah. version, but the 5200 version. There's going to be an 8 version. So we'll do the 5200 version first because everybody forgets about the 5200 version other than 5200 fans. <laughs> and I really <laughs> exactly. think it's a well done homebrew. PlaySoft really did a fantastic yes. job. And then I'm not gorgeous. forgetting about Atari 8 bit. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be offered as well. And so uh, I am looking for artists as well as people that can make labels and uh, box art for me to move forward. So I'm just, huge, huge request there. If you can help with that, I can give you a free copy <laughs> yeah. of the game um, and you yeah. get to enjoy the game. And just like, I am needing help with that department, but I want to self publish. So I have a company uh, locally that can make the boxes mm -hmm. and I want to move forward with that. But yeah, uh, really excited about this version. I think it's, I, I, you know, I'm probably going to try calling it Block 'em Sock 'em like special edition because it really is right. kind of the mm -hmm. definitive edition of it. Right. It takes everything that you already have in Block 'em Sock 'em and adds more yeah. to it. And and it looks absolutely gorgeous. The yeah. colors, the graphics, mm -hmm. um, the special features like the blocks. Yeah, there's different modes. Are, yeah, there's uh, like you can do like accessible. moving background and like. Playsoft is on a whole other level, and he just did this because yeah. I think he wanted to. So a huge thank you yeah. to him. And I want to do oh, his yeah. game He's justice amazing. with nice box art and label. And uh, I will be uh, writing him a letter and sending him his game. But it's his game. I'm, I'm the publisher. Yeah. I own the distribution rights. His game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Yeah, Paul is uh, a wizard. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> on the Atari. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like it's it's amazing. Like, and he's like, "Oh, do you like it?" I'm like, "I, I like it. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it." And it's like, <laughs> "I don't like it. I love this." And just yeah. I don't know. I it, and he sent it to me. I'm like, I was having kind of a bad day, and when he sent it yeah. to me, I got a little emotional because like it was it really brightened oh, my that's day. Great. So, yeah. Yeah. So what's the timeline for the 5200 8-bit if everything goes well? What what are you thinking for the release availability of um, it? I'm going to look at first quarter. And so my goal is by the end of first yeah. quarter, depending on how crazy my life gets, uh, my goal is to, it's it's near done. So like, of course he wanted to like add some levels and things and like a day later, hey, I, this is where I'm at. And it's like, <laughs> he's just a wizard. Um, wow. So the ROM should be finished by the end of the year. Um I'm sourcing shells right now. So I have, and then I have these 3D printed shells, but um, I want him to be happy with it because it's his game. And yeah. so the concern is that there's no difference between front and back. And so he's concerned if we put the cart in wrong, is that going to hurt a console? And so right. I want the I want the programmer to be happy with the release. And so I will be working yeah. with him to be satisfied. He, I think aftermarket shells is what we're going to compromise with. Uh, if anybody has those affordably, let me know. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I'm just going to take uh, repurposed shells at the time being for 5200. I have enough to do 30 copies. Um, I'm using Ba, who's on Atari Age, and he's taking the game and putting it on 5200 PCBs. So oh, they're nice. new PCBs. Oh, so the only thing repurposed is the shells, and there's no other way around yeah. that right now that that's affordable that that doesn't look like junk. The yeah. nicest words well, I can use shells are, are going to look good. Family friendly. Yeah. 8-Bit <laughs> <laughs> um, Poet asks, do you feel obligated to keep your beard and hat so your sprite is an accurate representation? <laughs> well, ironically, it's not because you notice that the beard on me, like people have said like, oh, that is that you? Because your, your beard's gray. <laughs> 
So maybe in my new, oh, no. maybe oh, new no. release of special edition, I should put some gray yeah. in my beard. <laughs> Um, yeah, recolor so, it, yeah. Sparkle yeah, a little, you yeah, know? So, yeah, <laughs> like, it's funny, because Walter Day came up to me at a pinball expo and called me Jason Kelsey. He's like, you're Jason Kelsey's twin, because <laughs> I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Anyways, oh, but okay. um, yep. long story short, uh, I don't feel obligated really to do anything. I am. I feel motivated to move forward, because I find it's a lot of fun to make a new homebrew and to have a little yep. input on it. And, and people have really enjoyed this game. The nice thing about this game is it's a single-screen puzzle game, which means it can be ported to anything. I didn't know that. Right. Like, early on, right. I was just like, cool, Genesis game, I'm going to promote it. But I've really enjoyed porting it to other things. Not many people yeah. would go this route, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, there's ports <laughs> I lost money on, and there's ports that do okay. And for 5200 yeah. I'm yeah. doing this for the fans, okay? That's so, for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how it's going to sell, and I'm going to offer it and just want to uh, let the 5200 community know that I haven't forgot about you, and PlaySoft yeah. really did you a solid, and the 8-bit community too. Oh, yeah. So the other thing is I'm going to offer yeah. these on digital as well. So people that want to play on their 400 oh, mini or SD card oh, or emulate, yes. yeah. I'm going to offer that on itch.io, including my Intellivision version as well. So. Uh, I do believe Daryl oh, Gunther, I think we're going to offer that on digital as well. So we got to talk to him about how he wants that game to be offered. So, Well, Steve Ramirez says you've already sold one 5200 version. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, so first quarter-ish, <laughs> awesome. uh, yep. maybe first half, um, you know, 5200. And, and so it's going to be offered on the 5200 forums, just like my Intellivision release, yep. which is sold through 80 yep. plus copies. So I'm very happy with that. Oh, that's really That's great. pretty good for television. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, really yeah. good. I mean, they have a pretty big community. Yeah. Intellivision community is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, what about a Lynx version? It looks like it's pretty suited for I, the Lynx. I, 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 think, I think it has to be like financially viable. So someone would have to program yeah. it. I am open to that. Yeah. So, hey, Lynx community, if you want it on the <laughs> Lynx, I would love to there see it on the Lynx, especially 35th. Well, it'll be the 36th anniversary this next year. But, yeah. but yes, Just absolutely love to have it on Lynx. <laughs> and if you think about it, I yeah. know your banner is all six classic yeah. Atari consoles. That means if That's it's right. on the Lynx, yeah. it'll be the sixth platform that I, I'll be offering Got it. it on. Got it covered. That's right. <laughs> yep. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking yeah. too. <laughs> oh, a Vectrex port. Uh, the twenty six hundred uh, is the other one. I would love to see it. Um, ooh, but that's, that's a tough, a tough one. one. Um, yeah. Without you know, it'd have to have some significant changes to it, and it's hard because so yeah. Daryl offered the amazing seven eight hundred version. It's hard to like to do a D make like. Daryl took yeah. a D-Make and made it better. And I think if the 2600, <laughs> I just don't know if the 2600 could pull this off. There's some amazing person out there that wants to take it on. But, like, Daryl, I think, with the 7800 yeah. version, I think it that's, like, that's 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 good. So. Yeah, the 2600, there's a lot of colors on the same yeah. line. It's going to be really yeah. tough. There's definitely going to be flickers. So you're going to have to make yeah. compromises. So... That might be, yeah, that might be I, challenging. I'm okay with just being <laughs> yeah. a different game. But the other thing, too, is I publish yeah. games, and so I'm always looking for new things to look out for. And I mean, I have like four or five yeah. other ideas for games. I'm trying to work with Champ Games, who uh, I, I, That's I great. proposed a, an option to move forward, and so I'm still yep. here, waiting to hear back from them about uh, a possible oh, game to, with Champ Games. So we'll see if oh, they want to move sweet. forward. I, I have guys. an idea for a game, and I'm really excited about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. excellent. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Uh, so that's the end of my questions. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to add uh, before we let you go? Anything that's coming up for you yeah. or if you're going to be at any conventions yeah. or anything like yeah. that? Yeah, so uh, every year I go to about 10 shows. And, yeah. um, you know, I do have an agent now who's going to do my bookings. But I'm always looking for new shows to go to. I want to go to the U one in Utah that's a like a charity event. I forget the name of it, okay. but uh, I've heard great things about that. Uh, Pittsburgh yeah. is intriguing. Uh, I know we've kind of dabbled back and forth with communications. Uh, Classic Game Fest, which uh, I do believe is in Texas. Um, so, yeah, my next shows I've confirmed is Game On Expo. And this is like ha I'm happy, but I'm sad, too, because 
Game on Expo, John Lester, great friend, gone several years. It's the same day as Midwest Gaming Classic. And so oh. uh, they both wanted me at the show, and so I had to make a tough call. Oh. Well, typically how I work is if you ask me and invite me first, I say yes, and that's that. And so that's fair. Uh, I love Midwest Gaming Classic and Game on Expo, and it was a tough call. So I'll be there in the spring. Side Quest Expo is a, a, another show I'm going to be at. It's a Portland like swap meet event. It's a smaller version yeah. of PRGE that's uh, done by Josh Hamlin. Um, those okay. are the two for next year and Brazil. So three, and then I'm sure there's yeah. more. But like typically, I have <laughs> room for about ten shows a year. Um, yeah. Typically, this is a time when I'm like a bear, and so I like to eat food and then <laughs> curl up into a cave and like go to sleep for three months. Sounds sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I mean, the I just enjoy doing my content, and uh, you know, it's yeah. been a really enjoyable time being on your channel. I've wanted to do this for a long time. You're highly oh, respected yeah. in the homebrew community oh, with you. your awards, your coverage. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have uh, my hats off for your work, and uh, thank you oh, so much. Off. Yep, with my with my <laughs> hair with my hair, I still have. But uh, I just well, want to say thanks for being on. It's been a pleasure talking talking games, and it didn't feel like work. Yeah, which is even better. So that's good. We, we I never want this to feel <laughs> like, like work because. Like yeah. I don't make I don't make enough money yeah. to uh, to make it feel what? like work. You make money? All the, what? Uh, <laughs> like that yeah. much, and it all goes into buying yeah, games. That, so I was gonna say it goes yeah, to giving cats say, cats treats. All your money at the end of went the to your animals when you fed them at the start of the show, right? Make sure yes. make yes. sure folks yes. to support Zero Page Homebrew and you know throw him oh, some cash yeah. or donations or support because you know what he's keeping oh, the passion of homebrews alive and single-handedly really promoting all homebrew stuff for Atari and more. And so uh, it's got my support. Oh, thanks so much, John. Yeah. And and you're an amazing support to the homebrew community as yeah. well. Like, like you have literally a hundred times the exposure I have <laughs> with your channel. So anytime you uh, show a homebrew on, on your YouTube channel, um, it's massive. It's massive because it just doesn't get the no. exposure it deserves because there's amazing wizards that yep. are performing magic yep. <laughs> for these 45 year old consoles yeah. and far outperforming any game that was made in the classic yep. era and and just doing it better than ever before and it's just getting better and better so anytime you show something on there it's just a, a net gain for everyone in the community and, and thank you so much and i i just have to say this on a side note atari is just beginning OK, uh, mm -hmm. may have been shown something. Can't say anything, but wow. <laughs> so yeah. really excited about yeah. Atari and their support of aftermarket games and yes. and just There's the programmers that, you know, if you're just someone that just likes to do stuff uh, because you just want to show your passion. I mean, I, I bring up play soft support of Scramble yep. and, and even block them, sock them. There's just amazing programmers out there that just love these classic consoles yeah. like our type like that yeah. like to even think that our type could be done on the 7800 and then oh my god i mean god. it just blows yeah. my mind even uh 1942 that came out this last year uh lisa digital oh, it's brilliant it's so i mean good. it's like fantastic like it's just yeah, yeah. They, they they know the machines and they know how to push yeah. it yeah it's it's really good and i hope a lot of these homebrews get platformed like atari's been starting to do and i mean they're they're coming out with bounty bob strikes yeah. back the first 7800 game by atari in 33 years and i hope it just keeps going because there's so many good 7800 games and i hope they expand even further. i just have to do a quick shout out to robert de crescenzo because um yes. uh, another time in which you know i was uh, kind of going through some things and his 7800 game single-handedly uplifted my spirits. And it was just the yeah. passion. Baby Pac, it's just, and I know that he went through yeah, some Baby challenges so good. with that. He almost quit it. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, but I have every yeah. single one of his games. So the fact Me that too. I, They're so the good. fact <laughs> that Atari is honoring him by throwing in a pack-in for the 7800 yes. Plus, I just... Uh, it's so amazing. I'm yep. so happy for him. 
uh, because he, that's how it's done. He's yeah. the man when it comes to 7800. Like, really, he really <laughs> is. Like, he's the dude. He really got is. me into the 7800 yep. and just so happy for him. Yeah, me too. He He's the guy who held down the fort with the 7800 for years and years and years and showing everyone else what could be done yeah. with it. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy for him and, and really it's it's amazing. So thank you so yeah. much, thank you. John, for being on the show. It's always great to talk with you in person yeah. or over the yeah. Internet. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk next time. Thank you for having me on next. Yeah, we'll have to have you uh, on the show next time you come up to Vancouver. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. And Play I've been some confirmed. Games. I forgot to say I'm confirmed for the next Vancouver oh. Retro Gaming Expo. Woo! So yes. let's plan it. All right. I'll do that. I'll come up and yes. uh, I'll let you know. And school gets out yeah. that Friday and I'm driving up and coming to the show. Oof. So you know what's cool about that. Excellent. I'll be done with school <laughs> and I'll be ready to talk games and to Perfect. unwind. I would love to be on a show. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to that, yeah. John. So thanks for coming on the thanks. show. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor. And um, I will let you go and get some sleep. Yeah. And uh, after grading papers. And good luck with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After grading papers. <laughs> yeah. Put some put some TV on in the background and grade some papers. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll see you online. Take yeah. care. Thanks, John. Bye. Bye-bye. Yep. Oh, that's great having John on. If you want to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Warning. Oh, Warning. The treat oh, ball is here loose. we go. The treat ball, ball is, is loose. loose. Do you want to grab the uh, bin? Who triggered that? Oh. BR Pocock. Thank Yay. you so much. The cats have been uh, Can I give you patiently waiting. Uh, patience. Yeah, I don't know about uh, patience. I'm not Tari's so sure bit, about been a bit patient naughty. cats. Oh. A little bit oh, naughty. Oh, right. Oh, gosh, that's the second time I've smacked him. Kittens. He just doesn't He's going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the box. Is it time? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, get into the box you go, <laughs> little just kitten. Like, I don't want the treats. I just want the box. If it fits, I sit. That's correct. Hey, kittens. Right. Well, it's great having John on. Oh, it's amazing. I've talked to him many times over the years and always... Oh, no, they went, went for that fell. One. Sorry. And uh, talk, talked with him about him being on the show and finally made, uh, made it uh, happen. And I always like it to a con coincide with something something like yeah. a homebrew game a release um so it was great to give a little sneak preview yeah. of the 5200 slash 8-bit version awesome. of uh block em, sock em. and of course you love puzzle games I do. so that worked out well, Very well to for you to play yes. the game while we we're talking chatting a bit ah. okay there you go and over here. One inside, one out. Oh, Atari's oh, taking charge Atari this time. Atari aggressively going after the treats. <laughs> There's another ball here. Hey. Okay, put there them both go. in there. Maybe. Well, if you both want to hang out in the box, you can hang out in the box. Well, we've been getting, you know, <laughs> more comfortable with each other. Yeah. Recently. Dan, Bernie just had to be put aside because there was too much attacking Bernie going Cat on. chaos. Oh, my goodness. Trying to chat with someone immediately brings out the worst of cats. They're all over the place. They're running around. Yeah. They're knocking stuff I mean, down. Muddy Funster was here <laughs> earlier. He obviously had to go to bed. He's in mm. Europe. But I was going to say congratulations on his Keystone Copper. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Release through Opcode Games. Yeah, that's Which awesome. is really great. Mm -hmm. Just, oh. Oh, okay. Okay. that a, was a mean cat right there. There you go. You need to be separated. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah yeah john's really easy to talk to um he's, he's great yeah. oh yeah i was looking forward to having him on the show yeah same um it's, it's good to hear brandy it's a crystal cage yeah. a little box little, that he can little ball to put him in yeah so, so he... they can't actually get to him i've got yeah. some clear plastic boxes i don't really? know if it'll fit up there mm -hmm. They'd still knock down the box. That's oh, the problem. Would. Yes. The new cat isn't quite as friendly as the old one was with Atari. <laughs> he just, he loves his brother 
so much. He wants to always do what his brother does. And then Atari is getting a little bit crotchier, crotchety -er <laughs> yeah. in his older age, and he just doesn't put up with him. Because it's um, just like when we feed them, like the regular food, uh, we'll put down the bowls. Yes. And it's the exact same food in both bowls. Um, he'll go over to Atari's bowl. And, and push him out. Push him out. His, his Atari food. will have to go to then his bowl. Then, then Sid will come back to that bowl. Yeah, and yeah. Atari's like, oh my God. Just <laughs> it's all pick, the same food. Pick a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but he just wants whatever Atari wants. He thinks that's better. Yes. He's got the better stuff. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. The cats know that during interviews, you're not watching closely so they can do the mystery. Yes, yes. that's exactly it. They know. Yeah, so trouble. They're Tari always was trouble. was going after cables <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, and he's abandoned this one. Oh, yeah. it's done. It's done. <laughs> oh, you cats Tari's are so funny. Over in the closet. Yeah. I think he's done, though. Are you yeah. done? He's, yeah, Is it all finished? <laughs> he's jumping up. All done, kittens. All right. Well, um, so... Let's see what's uh, coming up on the show soon. What is coming up on the show? So in two days, it's Halloween. Woo! We're going to force the cats into some costumes. Yes. And we're going to force ourselves into some costumes. Possibly, yes. <laughs> We've got a whole stack of candy. We do have a lot of candy. And for we... us. <laughs> for us. Because no kids come to the door. <laughs> well, they might. We'll have candy for them if they come if to the door. Yep. But it's highly unlikely. Um, and we're going to talk about our favorite candies. Because we've bought, bought our some of our favorite candies. We would like to introduce the world. Some Canadian candies. To some Canadian candies that <laughs> yes. maybe you're not aware of. Although if you watch, you know, um, people let's eat shows where they eat Canadian candies. Uh, our, my favorite candy, your favorite candy. Yes. So we can talk about candy and play some games. Some games. And boy, do we have some games. Yeah. <laughs> A blown surprise release. Well, we want to promote the show. <laughs> um, Count Ducula, No Sacks, Please, or Egyptian. Quite the title. Uh, it's a play on words of a British play turned into a tell of a movie. It's very strange. Okay. It's, it's No Sex, Please, or British. Is, oh. Is the play on. It's like nobody in North America knows about that. <laughs> okay. Um, exclusive world premiere. Awesome. Um, from Cyrano J. Um, and also Zombie Harvest exclusive final version. I'm which excited is for also both Also going to be these. released on the same day. The Zombie Harvest. You'll be able to play that too. That sounds. Both of them sound so intriguing. Yes. I'm very excited for both of them. And we're going to follow up with Spiders Arcade as well. Mm. So we want to play it again. It's so much fun. Oh, are we... is there an additional voice? Is something playing is in the background? Uh, is there something playing on on the? Oh, let's give her that and that. And it's just us. I don't know what those are, but is uh, it here? Oh, it's. I don't know. It's fine. I've muted it. What is that background voice? What? I don't know. Something. Uh, I don't Close know. down all the stuff. What did it sound like? Was it us repeated? Or was it, oh, what is going on? Test your microphone. Oh, maybe it was feeding through, feeding back through us. That, that cured. cured it? John Hancock and all. <laughs> Sounded like beer, beer pong. pong. Hmm. Oh, it might. Do you have something playing in the background? I shouldn't. It should be just us. I don't know. It could be something. Weird. It's gone. It could be Atari beer pong. It could be. Is he? Did he just I start streaming? How that's but possible. do you have him? Do you have him in a tab no, somewhere? No. Oh, free yeah. ad for Atari beer pong now. Oh. Um, yeah, and we're playing Star Spiders Arcade from um, Champ Games, and then on the first, we're going to be playing the exclusive world premiere of the Falling Leaves Collection, mm. which is right up there somewhere. But I'll show it on that day. Um, that's on Friday. And then on the next Tuesday, we're going to be playing the ABBUC 2024 contest entries, of which some have been released mm. so far, and some have not. So hopefully by the 5th, they'll all be out, um, and then we can play all of those. Mm. Some are really, really good. Actually, they all look really good. 
Um, so I think that's it said something about NES. Yeah. Weird. Probably Atari beer. It's got to be something playing in the background. Fellow Canadian sneaking in on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a video or something that just started playing. So yeah, somewhere. Can't no, any you. other twitches open there? Let's see. I I, I hate when stuff ha like that happens because you want to know why. Like you want to know what's going on. I, I'm. Could have been on my it computer. It could have been on the laptop it could have been on a browser that was open i don't know it's gone now i've muted it yeah i closed a bunch of stuff on my laptop so yeah, maybe that there was is it. something is there what is that recording yeah i don't what? know where it's coming from though that's weird yeah meh 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 i fixed it maybe the youtube where the 5200 was playing yeah you're playing a video oh that one that one shut down it was just vlc Interesting. it wasn't tapping into Interesting. I think mm. it must have been our broadcast rolled over into somebody else's, like Atari Beer, Bong, Beer Pong's broadcast, most likely through your laptop. Anyway. But why? There's nothing on my laptop. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's gone now. It's still it's still <laughs> playing, so I'm going to leave it. Is it, it still le playing? Leave it, leave it running and Coming find out. Coming off my laptop? Unplug the HDMI, and then we'll find out right away. Nope, it's on my computer. Okay. Okay. Don't blame my laptop. Yeah, I probably left YouTube playing <laughs> and changed to some other video. That yeah, is that does likely. happen. Yeah. That does happen. Um. So thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. Did you have fun playing the game? I had a great game? time. Yeah, I love listening list, to John talk. Listening to John. <laughs> and then uh, playing uh, video games. Hopefully you weren't too bored while I was talking. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. That's no. good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so thanks for watching. Vitoko, BR Pocock, Double Down, Cyrano. Uh, eight bit poet, uh, nostalgic proc FL Dan AVC Arena Foot, uh, Polygox, who well, else? Seven of seven, MK Smith, MK Smith, yeah, mm -hmm. Opcode Games, hello, hello, um. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Did oh, Catbot Arena. <laughs> Catbot Arena. Does I, I said BR Pocock. Yes. Um, uh, S. Ramirez. Thank you. For those of you who've joined us the entire stream yeah. as well. Oh, we Strawberry System it. 22. Thank yeah. you for the raid. Uh, and everybody else who was lurking. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so we'll be back here on Thursday. Same time, except an hour later. So I'll give you time to come home. Oh, well, thank you. And relax. Cause it's just a relaxing <laughs> It stream. is Halloween. Who yep. knows? Someone might ring the doorbell when I get home. Maybe. So that's okay. Maybe, maybe. Yep. Um, the post, the post Halloween stream. That's right. Or post candy. Post candy stream. Candy. Well, we're going to be eating candy. That's on the true. Show. We will. Well, yeah. you know, after you get the candy, you have to eat the candy. So that's, true. that's yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, so uh, watch out for that. Yep. Um, and follow the channel if you want to be alerted mm -hmm. when it uh, starts. Um, oh, and MK Smith. Hello, hello. So uh, we're done and uh, we'll see you on Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.